When I was 18, just after my first child was born, the Commonwealth Games were held in Jamaica. World records were broken. Now, 48 years later, my grandson is here, 18 years old. He is entering the third stage of education. Jamaican love, Josh's age group are doing great things at the Commonwealth Games in Edinburgh. But it's time to eject the ruling family of Britain and outlaw any ruling class in Jamaica. So over to you now, Josh. I'm just looking forward to entering a new stage in my life and hopefully I can spend some more time on the show where I can get advice from some other people who have been through the same things that I'm about to go through now. Well, thanks. I'm so glad you're here at the University of the West Indies. Straight up, News Talk 93 FM. I'm Jerry Smart. Yes, good morning. Welcome to Straight Up for today. Today is the 1st of August, and this is the anniversary of a few things, like, for instance, the proclamation of the legal freedom, so-called legal account to the laws of Britain that rapists, so-called le legal freedom of the Africans that they had in Jamaica how many hundred years. 1st of August, 1834. And again, Marcus Garvey, when he launched the organization, when he launched his UNIA 100 years ago, he instituted an annual convention month. The whole month of August was dedicated to the convention of the UNIA from the 1st of August to the last day of August, including his birthday right in the middle of August. But you know, we are, I, hardly, I hardly like the newer versions, especially of some of the instrumental, the classical instrumental music of Jamaica. I always prefer it. It's just a kind of um, being used to the original versions and that kind of thing. But um, frequently they are better renditions. And just as it was with the freedom, the so-called freedom of 1834, the freedom of 1838, and later of 1962, those so-called freedoms, they weren't good enough. They weren't good enough. They were not exerted and held. They were not exerted and held. So that is one case where Newer version have to be improvement on the older version. So we are we're just carving out our freedom. And maybe there's a possibility for Jamaica to be independent one day. But we, the African people in Jamaica, will continue to carve out our freedom. Just like how some of the African people in Jamaica, the Maroons, from 200 years, from 100 years before the abolition of slavery, and more than 200 years before the so-called independence of Jamaica, from 1738, 1739, the African Maroons of Jamaica, had carved out their independence and fight Britain to a standstill because they know that treaties can only be entered into by equal partners. So when there was a treaty between the British and the Maroons, there was a treaty between equal equal um, contenders. You don't have treaties between superiors and inferiors. But gradually the Maroons were tricked and their land has been whittled away, their rights have been whittled away and even their sense of being has largely been whittled away, but not completely. And we're waiting on the reconciliation between the, the Maroon population of Jamaica and the rest of the Africans. Not all of the rest of the Africans, because the majority of the rest of the Africans are not Africa conscious and not self-confident. But one day maybe the majority will be. But in the meantime, there is a minority, but a large minority. The kind of minority that you call a critical mass. The critical mass that changes things is usually not a majority, you know. Usually a minority, but a minority just large enough to change the consistency, the consistency of the whole, or at least to, to change the to change the stance of the whole or the circumstances around the whole. But let us have a piece of the original freedom song from the Scatterlights that was their signature piece of music, led by Tammy McCook, a leader, a leader of brilliant man and man and woman, including Doreen Schaefer. Brilliant musicians of before independence and through the so-called independence of Jamaica. Let's hear the original version. Freedom sounds. And this is, hold on, one minute, one more minute. This is, um, the origin of this music is Tchaikovsky music, you know, white people classical music. This is the overture to Swan Lake by Tchaikovsky. And the scatterlights as people who went to classical music school at Alpha Boys School. They used to learn these things from number 7, 8, 9, 10. 
This is the overture to Swan Lake by Tchaikovsky, as done by the scatterlights and called Freedom Sound. Straight up. Yeah, straight up. I'm here with Jerry Small. We're working today as usual. Every day is like a holiday. And every holiday is a working day. And um, I have a great guest. He's been here a couple of times before. And his most appropriate he came back on this day. Louis Marriott. Who is a custodian and a reservoir of historical facts about Jamaica. Politics, culture, music, sport, everything. I will soon be hearing from Louis Marriott. Um, just before that, I just want to yell a couple of my listeners. I book them up every day and they encourage me so much. There's Garfield Archibald. He's a great cricketer. Garfield Archibald. Play for Sunshine Cricket Club in Balcombe Drive. Over in Waterhouse. Garfield Archibald. Yell him. Tell him that you heard us. Yell him, man. Acknowledging and appreciating his support. And critical listenership of um, Straight Up Archie. Garfield Archibald. Gar- Garfield Archibald. Play for Sunshine Creek Club. In Balcom Drive. Out of Balcom Drive in Waterhouse. Then our two ladies from Spectrum Insurance. Spectrum Insurance. Rosie Arnold. Miss Rosie Arnold. She went to Rossi's school. You know. Russo. Russo school. She went to Russo. Not Rossi's. Rossi's is in Hanover, Lucy. She went to Russo school. It's not actually on Russo Road. I think it's off... Um, it's off Chisholm Avenue, you know, or off Maxfield, somewhere around there. Yeah, Louis Mar, got closer to the mic, because you're supposed to be better informed than me. Russell School. I think it's Little Q Road. Well, I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't dispute it either. Okay. Yeah, man, my, 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 my wife and her brother went there, and their mother was a well-known teacher there and caregiver, Mrs. Carmen White, of Russell School. Russell School, and many other people went there that um, are well-known and well-founded. And they would remember Windy, that young youth who used to build um, mechanical contraptions from the little boy. Build, um, build um, handcart to have a motorized, you know, motorized handcart out a lawn, more engine, all kind of different things. Some of them electric, some of them internal combustion. Up to now, Windy is there, you know, up and down Maxfield and around the environment. But um, apart from Miss Rose and a lot of Spectrum Insurance, who went to Russell School with people like um, Dr. Asha and her brother and sisters, Carol Asha. Apart from Miss um, Rose Anna, there's also Miss Elaine Hazel, Elaine Hazel, insurance consultant at Spectrum Brokers. And to round it off with another meal, when we were there talking in Spectrum, there comes Big Youth. There comes Mr. Manly Buchanan, Big Youth. So vibrant. One of the best users of the stage in Jamaican music. Up to now, you know. Up to now. When you have a stage show. Whether it's just a little garden. Or it's a garage. Or it's somewhere like Chaser's restaurant. Just on the land there. Just on the concrete there. Or it's a big stage. When you see big youth go up on a stage, you know. And how him use the stage. Because use, the use of the stage, Mr. Martin will tell you. The use of the stage is a craft in itself. Is this not so, Mr. Mario? Yes, sir. The use <laughs> of the much stage, so. both by actors and by musicians and by artists. Dancers. Yes, dancers, yes. The use of the stage, the use of the space with dramatic effect and all kind of effect. Not true? Indeed. Yes, sir. So we have those four listeners that I'm um, glad to acknowledge. And also, there's, there are two listeners who, who, um, who won tickets to Oral Traces show on Sunday. Oral Traces um, let loose on Sunday at the Jamaica Pegasus at 7 o'clock. Two listeners won tickets. But um, Miss Elaine Watson, she don't collect her prize yet. I wonder why. Could she call us? Can we take calls today? We, we, um, we, are, we have a, not a skeleton staff, but a... A smaller staff than usual. Miss Elaine Watson, I want you to tell us how you're going to get this ticket. Because we don't want you, even though you promised to come here for the ticket yesterday, you didn't come. We still want to get the ticket. We still want to get the, you to get the ticket. We want to find a way for you to call and make us know where you can call. Or here where you do now. Come down to the show tomorrow at Pegasus. Come down there tomorrow. And you call for me. And I, you will get the ticket at the gate. Don't fret yourself. You come there. 
you come, you know, don't send nobody else there, you know. You come. If you want to bring somebody else, yes, you can bring them. But you have to be there for this ticket to be given out. And we have two more tickets today. Want to ask a question. Want a male winner and a female. Well, we have two female winners already yesterday, but want a male winner and a female. Well, not, well, it was even all female. Would like to know what, how long oral trace is spent in Brazil. And I wanted to ask this question, but I don't have the answer because I was calling Alan Cole and I don't get him. I want somebody to name what is the name of the club or clubs that Alan Cole played for when he was in Brazil. When he was in Brazil playing professional football. In about, sometime between 71 and 73. What was the name of the club that Alan Cole played for? Your butter was kind of um, hankering. Hankering after a ticket yesterday. So maybe him can find the answer for this on phone in or find some way. But I'm not even sure we can receive phone calls. Matter of fact, we have also some um, text messages from yesterday. You know. But it was interesting to see Impact last night. Impact with Cliff Hughes. You know that discussion program on Thursday evenings after the TVJ news. Impact with Cliff Hughes. Cliff Hughes hosted the show and he, he hosted his guest last night. It was a transvestite. Somebody who dress across the lines of sex. In other words, them dress in the, in the accepted kind of dress that is, not, that is of the sex. That is opposite to them. Like a man dressing like a woman and a, or a woman dressing like a man. Transvestite, them call it. Trans mean across and vest mean. Vest and vestment mean dressing. So somebody who dress across the lines of sex. Dress like some other sex or otherwise from themselves. Um, so the, the guest last night was a transvestite called Shimself Ashley. Well, you know, Ashley can be a male name and it can be a female name. Even like my first name, Robin. You have female of them called Robin, you know. But I don't think you can call female Robin Hood. You have to find somebody who you feel. Must be Robin Breast. I must, Robin Redbreast must have a female. No, true, sir. Is that married? I just thought yeah, must it be. just occurred to me, sir. Robin Redbreast must, must have been a female. It must have been. Yes. But since we are punning, uh, may I remind you that you don't have a skeleton staff star in cemeteries? No, yes, I, have, I didn't say skeleton. I made sure not to say skeleton <laughs> yeah, staff. What, what, we have, what you have, though, is a holiday staff. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and we don't work graveyard shift. We're <laughs> around the clock. Indeed. No, true, sir. Yeah, yes. Yes, so you have Robin, but most of the female name of them called Robin, them spell it R O B Y N. But my name spelled R O B I N and Robin Hood. That man where they overthrow the sheriff and the, the criminal them. You know, up in a Nottingham. Is Nottingham? Or yes, Nottingham. Nottingham. Forest. And he used to rest in a Sherwood Forest. Yeah. He used to hide out in a Sherwood Forest. Because them try to rob him father land. Them try to rob and grab him father land. And he knows every human being have a right to them land. And he put up resistance. Him and him other man. Them and, they, and him female when he Marian. Look, you can find that, sir. Robin Hood by Louis Prima. As we go along, fighting for independence and holding independence. For independence is not something you receive. Independence is not awarded. It is taken and it is held. And it is held high. Held high. We have Louis, Louis Prima here. Louis Prima. L-O-U-I-S. L-O-U-I-S. Louis P-R-I-M-A. Prima. Robin Hood and Marian. Oh, babe. The, the, the same music it have three names. You know. Robin Hood, Marian and Oh, babe. It's all in one, but it's not, um, yes. Yes, man, so Cliff Hughes had that transvestite Ashley on him program last night. And boy, Ashley, Ashley had a big impact from Cliff Hughes. Ashley won't jump over Cliff. And he even have a bigger impact too. I have Cliff Hughes sweating there. Uh, Cliff Hughes said to Ashley one time, what kind of work is it? Ashley said, I'm not at the present time employed. So you are Cliff Hughes now. How you make two ends meet? Well, that is how I should survive. Probably I should survive the way by make two ends meet. Or play both sides against the middle. You, can, you know, some people play both. In this room, Mr. Mr. Don't some people play well, both? I, I thought Ashley was the middle. No. <laughs> Closer to the mic. <laughs> no, I said I thought Ashley was the middle. How come we're not getting good sound from Mr. Mario? You thought Asher was the middle? Yeah. Or the, or the, middle, the middle ground? <laughs> yeah, middle sex. Oh, middle, oh, middle, oh middle, sex, middle sex. Not Cornwall and no. not St. Elizabeth. 
Well, no, Saint Elizabeth no, not no. Cornwall too. Saint Elizabeth, not Saint is, Andrew. Is Lovers Leap? Maybe yeah. that was a Lovers Leap. Yes, yes, know. yes. So yes, that is a cliff. But uh, Ashley do and jump over on a different cliff. <laughs> and cliff kind of start as Ashley how she survive, how she survive. Anyway, I'll come out of them business. I couldn't watch it straight now because I was watching the other show and them scandal. Very interesting show about American politics and intrigue and president uh, or president are doing a world office with, with, with um, people. So every now and again I had to go over to Impact. I couldn't stay there watching um, scandal. But when I go back over Impact, I see the same, same difference, uh, same scandal over there. So. And I, I was, it's a kind of voyeurism I was doing, you know, kind of peeping for Uncle Cliff okay. and Ashley every now and again. But fireworks always look like it was about to start, but anyway, later for that. We have Louis Prima. Yes, um, there are some other things we want to talk about, but do we, we don't have any breaks today. We have a break? Alright, let's go for a break. Straight up. Yes, welcome back to Straight Up. I'm your host, Jerry Small. We are broadcasting here on Independence Day from the studios of New Stock. On the Mona campus of the University of West Indies, and I have my becoming frequent guest, Mr. Louis Marriott. But we cannot exhaust his, uh, we can't exhaust his ability to contribute so greatly to the program. Yes, yeah, so um, we have some text messages here now from yesterday. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, it seems, uh, first text message. It seems per Perkins was the savior for the JLP. The JLP is a good opposition. I think they need to stay there because they were a bad and tricky government. Next one. Where and when? No, where could I find a reliable source of information about the history and teachings of Selassie and Garvey? There are many books about, um, both about Haile Selassie and about Garvey. I think there might be more books about Garvey. Many books about Selassie and Garvey. Available at most good bookstores, or if you, you can order them also. Also, there's a lot of information on the internet. On the internet between Google and Wikipedia and so on. A lot of information, a lot of videos, a lot of recordings of their voices. A whole lot of information. Now you have to sift them properly because there's also a lot of misinformation. But you can reliably get in that information. After a while, you will become skillful in sifting out what is true from what is false. There are also bookshops, like I think the name of Mr. Miguel Lawrence Bookshop, Head Start Books. I think it is now on um, Duke Street. I think it is now on Upper Duke Street. Head Start Books, Mr. Miguel Lawrence Bookshop. has a lot of material on that, on that both Haile Selassie's Imperial Majesty and Gamarcus Garvey. And you have many other bookstores that are reliable and they can send for books for you. But the internet is also a great source of information, all kind of information. You wouldn't believe some of the, the volume and variety of information about those two great men, Isla Selassie and Marcus Garvey. And there's others and more. Next one, Jerry, I give thanks to God for the drought because it reduces the amount of mosquitoes which slow down dengue and the other recent mosquito threatening diseases. It also brought out your praying spirit and your, your calling on God, which I didn't know you could do. Me and my talking, I said, I never knew me could have called upon God and praying spirit. Yes, that is coming from Patrick Socks. Well, you must, must also pull up the socks, Patrick Socks. And um, well, what we can pull up the socks? Except Muta. Muta no, no, no need to pull up no socks. <laughs> but him can, him can improve him knee lift. When I was going to GSC, you know, I learned about knee. Even before GSC, because my brother used to coach me before I reached GSC. When you start going to them school, you start learning about knee lift and how, how much it improves. Especially at school by GSC, Louis Marriott. Yeah, we have a uphill. The, 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 the third hundred or the four hundred yes. or the four forty there is a uphill, you know, we call it Melrose Hill. Melrose Hill, yes. Like it slopes <laughs> like Hope Road, because you know, it's on the banks of the Hope Road. And it slopes steep like Hope Road, so you have a good. You drop out your belly coming up that, that back stretch there. Melrose, mm -hmm. them call it. Yep. And is that leg them, is that leg them give me for running you know, in my first relay? I really once did a relay leg on Melrose, Melrose Hill, Hill and shocked everybody. Yes. Because I actually passed a guy in front of me. Yes. <laughs> yes. You, 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 you pass him although he was staggered in front of you. Yes. You, well, he was a much better runner than I. Oh, I'm I not hearing him, Oh, I'm not hearing him. You hearing him well? 
Well, maybe. And I'm not even hearing myself doing my earphone properly. And if Kabi is still alive and around, you might, you might remember the, the day. Oh, yeah. I'm come from, when I come from the family of Kabi, that have those stories. I don't, don't know. Kabi. Don't we know. went to school that Kabi. So anyway, Mel Rosel. Yes, Patrick Sachs, as I was saying, Muta can't pull up no sack, but him can learn nearly and it will do good when you're going out there, backstretch on Mel Rosel. Next text message. Um, hail up Jerry and your guest This is the guest yesterday Carl Phil Potts I'm referring to Could your guest speak to his relationship Presently with the Ethiopian World Federation I'm so sorry I didn't get to read this before And let Carl Phil Potts get, let, get to tell you about his relationship With the Ethiopian World Federation The organization of which he has been a part For about at least 45 years from 1969 Till now The Ethiopian World Federation Charter 15 In its first manifestation and Later on and from that time, the 12th tribe of Israel no longer holds up the charter of the Ethiopian World Federation as its mandate. But I know that Brother Carl still has good relationship with other branches of the Federation, including, as he said, Solomon Wolf Branch and other branches that are based in Ethiopia, based in Waterhouse, based in New York. And, but, you know, he, he best could speak about that. Next one. How can Jesus wash away sins and he is not God? You're talking about the doctrine of um, the doctrine of redemption and washing by the blood of Jesus and all that. That is, that is written about in the New Testament. First thing now, sin. The word sin, I think is a, I don't sure if it's a Greek word. I think it's a Greek word. You know? The art come from a Greek root. Anyway, from that time, sin, sin really mean falling short of the mark. That's what the word sin Usually, um, was defining falling short of the mark you were aiming or the mark the mark to be attained or the mark the desirable mark is to be accurate and to be full to be full of um, proper action and when you're short of proper action them call that sin that is termed sin falling short of the mark but some people and in some people's mind most people's mind to fall short of the mark is utter condemnation in other words, not just a fall short of the mark and you try it, try again. But to some people, the concept of sin is utter condemnation. Having sh fall short of the mark, instead of just fall short of the mark, like you're in a high jump and you try to jump six foot three, and you fail to clear the bar. So for some people, failing to clear the bar means that you are out forever. In other words, you don't buck the bar three times. In, in competition high jump, I think you buck the bar three times, or you fail to go over the bar three times, before we are disqualified from trying further. But in some people's mind, and in some, especially religious people's mind, falling short of the bar even one time renders you sinful and disqualified until somebody come and come redeem you. Well, that redeemer was always, a redemption was spoken about a long time from the old history of the Jews and other people, not the Jews alone, because most of the Jews' doctrine Israelite doctrine, they learned it when they were down in Africa. Most of the doctrines, the different doctrines of the Jews, even the story of the creation and many other things, is when they was in Egypt for that 400 years, they adopted a lot of those things from existing African philosophy, doctrine and teaching. Learn that. Like how the Jews did learn that. So anyway, the concept of a redeemer, a great person rising up from another nation to come and make up for all of the shortfalls of the nation. It's an ancient concept in many peoples over many times. That one day one of our sons, sometimes daughters, but most times they're looking for a male. One young, because even the concept of hero, you know. The word hero is the same word, zero, which means seed. A, a male child born that is going to come and ful fulfill all of the wishes of the nation. Hero. And anyway... Um, the concept of redemption that one day one of our young or some of our young or a whole generation of our young is going to come and make up for the shortfalls of the past the concept of redemption somebody coming to bail you redemption means bail somebody come and pay for what you did not pay for or what you neglected to pay for and making up back for you and winning back your freedom that person come and pay your fine that you couldn't pay and you come free now you come out of jail free because of somebody come pay for you redemption that is the concept of redemption. So now for the thousands of for hundreds of years the Jews had that concept which they learned down in Africa and which many people learned from other people, because Africans also learn from other people. 
and were looking for that day when someone, that one, would come and redeem them. Eventually, that one was conceived of somebody who was touched with a special touch by the Creator. In other words, that touch name, that touch name anointing. And eventually, you have more and more traditions and ideas and names built up around that concept of being redeemed one day by a great son. And eventually, the word Christ means anointed. And so, therefore, this whole persona is built up that one day, one day, someone is going to come and bail us out back, take us out of, free, out of bandage, pay for what we couldn't pay for, and in addition to that, wash us clean. Because we're well dirty, and that one can wash us clean. And guess what now? Them one going to come kill that one, you know, because that one going to save us. So the wicked going to kill that one before that one save us. But the whole magic is that when you kill that one, the blood where you shed, the wicked shed the blood of that good one, that same blood now can come wash all who did dirty. And miraculously, the red blood, when the red blood don't wash you, you're white like snow. You look leprous. That's the next problem you deal with, that problem when you come, you cross that bridge when you come. When you wash and you turn white, or you like you rub in a bleach. And you rub and rub till you come and you look brown and everybody glad how you look brown. You, have, you solve that problem that time, when you reach that, the bridge of getting too brown, till your skin rub out. And you start getting skin cancer, you cross that bridge that time, but in the meantime, people won't get brown. You know, understand? A little by little, people build up um, understanding, build up concepts, and build up faith. And faith tells people a lot. Sometimes, even when the faith blind, it tells people. But uh, I'm talking too long about your text message. But you did ask how Jesus can wash your sin and him is not God. So we start discussing and then we start discussing washing. And we start discussing bleaching. Because you know all the blood there. And your, your life full of blood and bad mark. And yet one going to come, come with them blood. Have a magical bleaching content in it. That instead of red up your clothes. It wash your clothes them white as snow and all them kind of way. And these are concepts that people build up to encourage themselves and to encourage one another and overcome national depression instead of individual depression. Sometimes the whole nation depressed, you know? depressed and sad and pessimistic and no better not there. And that's why black people have to suffer all kind of them their national redemption. When a whole set of people are talking about say black people can better have all kind of idiot argument. These are depressive mindsets that people are encouraged to adapt and maintain. And say, so, well then other people better than we you know. You know so black people curse. And you have to find a nice brown girl to try to lift your colour because Nothing too black can go. All can I eat that argument? That's why Bolt said that heading the birds of Peter of, of, of um, shipwreck. Bolt said, Edinburgh. I don't know if him says up, but them say him said Edinburgh is a piece of shipwreck. Edinburgh or Glasgow? Glasgow. One of them. I don't even know. Same difference for me. The, well, I know they are different, you know, but um, him said that town up there is a piece of shipwreck compared with, with London, which is a shipyard. So, anyway. We just run them out from them little car. Look how them run them out on us. But it's better we run them out. We're all mouth in fun more than we run our mouth in condemnation. Anyway, next one. Good morning, Uncle Jerry. Jamaica here, texting from Montego Bay. Just want to wish you a blessed day. Keep up the good job. Thank, thank you, Jamaica. I assume that Jamaica is a lady. Uh, any, where, any name end with Mika. I just assume she's a lady. Let's go for a break. Straight up. Well, good morning and welcome back to Straight Up. I'm your host, Jerry Small. We'll soon be cutting into our guest here, Mr. Louis Marriott. But in the meantime, I'm going to read one text message, yes, before I take your phone call. One more text message. Text message. Is abortion wrong? I am 25 years old and I've done five so far. I want to know if I have sinned. Well, as I said, sin means falling short of the mark. And you know that to deliver a child, deliver, you get something to carry. And you carry it and deliver it where it's supposed to go. That's why they call giving birth, delivering a child. And if a child is not delivered, if the fetus, the young baby is not delivered, you fall short of the mark. But maybe you weren't aiming at the mark, you know. Maybe you were just doing target practice. Well, or maybe you was wanting to fire in blanks when you take a stock. These things have results. Chemistry. People talk about the chemistry between human beings. You have physics, you know. You have physics. Well, you have chemistry first. When people, you know, people kind of have a little effect on one another. 
and just find so them want to be near one another and look like them want combustible too. So after you have chemistry, you have physics, where the physical thing go on. And frequently when a man and a woman have physics, biology follow, not so much a I think it's more biochemistry than physics. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, biochemistry. Yeah, yes. Yeah, but That's when the hormones get active, you know? No, that is the chemistry. Based on the biology. The hormones is the chemistry first. Then now the physics is they when you don't get together and you don't rub two sticks together. See? I, I mean, don't know about two sticks. That's well, not two sticks. No, 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 <laughs> two sticks. When you, when you file, when you file though, this, you know, when you, whatever, when you find, when you find, um, when you make the mark, when you hit the mark, mm -hmm. and then now later biology follow, which is um, the multiplication. And, uh, anyway, long story short, falling short of the mark, which is what, what sin means. Yes, not delivering the child or aborting a baby and not carrying it, delivering it to life. You know, to the, to the fullness, independent life, that it can live independent of you. Yes, that is falling short. For, and personally, I don't like the idea at all. I don't think it's a good idea. But I know that there are difficulties that can be encountered. For instance, suppose a woman is raped. And the rapist impregnate the woman. You can see that terrible difficulty that a woman, or even a young girl, sometimes even a 9-year-old, 11-year-old girl face, having been impregnated against her will by a rapist. It's very difficult to face that and to say that that person must bear that child and then must bring up that child for the next 20 years. And even after the child is 20 years old, that child can become a burden upon that person for the next 80 years till them is 100 years old. So I, it, it is easy for me and me as a man to say, boy, them not feel bad. But I don't like the idea at all. I don't like the thing at all. And must, it must be agonizing for them even to breastfeed that child. Yeah, you know? knowing says a rape is rape. Right. And them have to be sustaining this, this life, you know, yeah. as a product of rape. Yeah. It's difficult, but I still, it still can't bring me to accept um, rape as a sol I mean, accept abortion as a solution for any kind of problem, even pregnancy after rape. It's difficult, and yet... Me and you is male, Louis. Mm -hmm. And females have much more responsibility. We, it's easy for us to say this. We have much more talk. Yeah, yeah, more talk. Yeah. They can't walk away from children. So you find that man will even have a girlfriend, have a wife. And when the wife gets pregnant, they walk away left the girlfriend and the wife. The wife, very few women will walk away leaving a child. Very few because them does naturally have that maternal and caring feeling. Worse when that thing came out of their life. Yes, but I agree. I don't think that um, is good. It's not good. I don't think it is right. And yet, it faces you. More. But having had five abortions, I scarcely believe that those five pregnancies were a result of rape, repeated rape. It has seemed to become a habit to this person who sending this text message, text message as a form of birth control, the ultimate birth control. And... Um, yeah, I don't believe it's good at all, and it's not. It can't be good for you if they're done, especially when you have done this over and over. Can't be good for you, physically. Can't be good for you mentally. I don't see any good that it can do. But as I said, there are cases where, boy, and these are the kind of things. These are the kind of problems. These are the kind of solution, problem solving that faces human beings, and exercise your mind and help your mind to grow. And we have to think about these things. Our mind is exercised and we develop philosophy. And philosophy is not an empty thing. People believe that philosophy is a theoretical thing. Philosophy is a very practical thing. If it is not practical, it, it doesn't work. It's not really philosophy. I don't think it's really philosophy if, if it cannot be practiced to some benefit. What do you think, Louis? Yeah, I quite agree with you. I was reading a remarkable speech a couple of days ago and um, it almost reoriented me in terms of my own understanding of certain matters yes. certainly clarified and elucidated some things for me yeah. um, which had been lying somewhere beneath the surface but yes, really yes. came forward now. Yes, yes, yes. We're going to take a phone call <clears throat> and then we'll get back into Louis' mind workings which are very valuable. Good morning and welcome to Straight Up. Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Good morning. Good morning, how are you doing? I'm good. Yes, ma'am. Listen. What do, want, what do you want me to talk about? The, the, the um, question or the abortion? Both, please. Both. <laughs> and you can make two, two birds live with one stone. Don't kill the two birds. All right. Make two birds live with one stone. You know, like you, I'm not a fan of abortion. No. 
as birth control. Yeah. However, you know, I was listening to a program the other day and I heard a man of the cloth yeah. expounding how much um, it is very important to save a life. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, when a young girl, nine, eight, yes. younger, yes. 11, yes. is um, molested by a father yes. in an incestuous way, brother, yes. cousin, grandfather, neighbor, neighbor, um, and <laughs> teacher. Yes. Coach. Coach. Pastor. Pastor. Yes. Anybody. Because how does a rapist look? The, the, a rapist looks like anybody. Yes, the rapist doesn't have a classical profile. Thank you very much. And I'm saying, in this little forthright body now, for that child to carry a pregnancy to term, you realize how much danger that child is in? Yeah. And how much that child has already been murdered? Yes, yes. And I think we should really save that life, yeah. life of the child, because I don't know why we want to wreck a life to save a life. Yeah. It, it doesn't follow. Yeah. So, you know, I am in unfortunate situations like that. Yeah. I don't think the pregnancy should be carried. I think that child should be saved, the life, because you see, after a rape, you have, you have a walking dead. Yeah. You know, so that's my little point on a difficult situation. Now, yes. regarding the question, yes. um, Alan Skill Cole yes. played with the Nautica Club in Brazil. That, so, that seemed to ring a bell. Ring a bell? I, I was calling Alan and I don't get him, but I, when you mention it now, I remember him always talking about Nautica. Nautica. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Well, uh, well, all right. Then now you have um, you have now entered Oral Tracy. Oral Tracy is um, let loose. Are you? Our ticket is here. You going to collect it today? <coughs> um, um, um mm, maybe you could bring it for me. Yes, yes, yes. But I forget now. No, um, we're going to forget to re no, not going to forget for going to remember. <laughs> I don't even remember what I was saying. It's all right. <laughs> yes, but, um, yes, ma'am, I think you win that one. Thank you. Thank you very much. But, um, when, when is your birth month? Oh, this month. That's great. This is my birth month. Yes, I thought. Can you imagine? So, so, I don't know why I guessed that one right. So I can't keep up the ticket then, having guessed that right. Oh, you want to keep it? <laughs> <laughs> all right. No, I get naughty for that, for that answer. Naughty? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> That's Louis Marriott, our guest here. Oh, hi, good morning, good um, Louis. Good morning. How are you doing? So good I'm to fine, hear thanks. you again. I'm fine, thanks. No, I won't say like some people say, I'm good. I can't pass any judgment on that. I'm fine. You have not been washed. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I did have a shower this morning. <laughs> no, no, I mean, you weren't confirmed when you were at JC. Oh, they tried to confirm me. No, no, no. Well, yes, I actually, I was forced to be confirmed, which is kind of a... Uh, That's like a rip. Indeed. Seriously. Indeed. Um, and the person who forced me to get confirmed sort of took a set on me for the rest of my time at JC. Oh, he was fired from JC eventually. I was very pleased to hear. Yeah. But then he ended up as chief education officer or something like that. And then registrar at the UWI. So you jumped And from. believe it or not, I got a scholarship to the UWI. Yeah. And I couldn't do the subjects that I had wanted to do. And when they examined um, the question and uh, investigated to some extent, they discovered that the error came from the registry of which he was the head. Error? Yeah. Uh, not the comedy, a the tragedy error. of error. Yeah. Yeah, but um, as I said, that is like a rape, you know, it and um, you know, and rap, you know, and uh, my sister, mm? you know that um, the rapture that is written about in Revelation and other places, the rapture when, you know, yeah. When those people who are saved are taken from a, a taken from a, I think taken from the destruction that is to come on others. Mm -hmm. The word rapture is a is a is a form of rape, you know, but a, but an enjoyable rape. Enwrapped. Oh, know? because you're you're okay. Yeah, so. en, enwrapped. Not wrapped up like in a paper, like in a package, you know, but wrapped. 
you are um, so overcome with um, the, the pleasure that is like um, you, you, you soon you become unconscious with pleasure and with overcome with joy, you know. No, uh, that's spirit, compared to rape. Spiritual orgasm. I'm telling you that rapture and rape come from the same Oh. It's a spiritual orgasm. Okay. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, you're with rapt attention. Yes, rapt. You're, you're held, you're bound, spellbound. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to go for Do we have a time signal? We don't have no news, but no news is good news. Well, it's good to hear that okay. you're on the radio today. Well, thank you very much. You know, as usual, holidays, we do delight in our work in for holiday. Yes, 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 yes. And the information is always good, so thank you. Yes, yeah, and Louis, as a, as, a, as a former citizen of London, no, no I was not a citizen. When I said citizen, no, but I said citizen, uh, somebody will uh, live in a city, you know. A worker in London. <laughs> no, when I said citizen, not a citizen of Britain, <laughs> but you were, you know. I wouldn't call myself a citizen of London. I remember my English secretary, um, when I, whenever I said something about going home, yeah. she would say, but you go home every day. I said, no, I go to the place where I'm currently living. Yeah. Um, home is Jamaica. Yeah. Or yard. Well, she wouldn't understand yard. No. So you'd have to tell her that you go to your yard in the evening, but you won't go home. But if you're talking to Jamaica now, you'd have to tell them, say you go home in the evening, but you won't go to your yard. Yes. Yes, man, but um, as a citizen of, uh, well, uh, as, a, as a resident, resident of London, you would know that mm -hmm. I am enjoying a busman holiday. Yeah. Not true? Yes, indeed. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am? Yeah. Thank you very much, yeah. Okay, take care. Yes, um, good morning and welcome to Straight Up, hello. Morning, morning, Jerry. Yes, sir, why is that? Morning, Mr. Maria. Yes, good morning, sir. Couple, couple of things. You, you see the Marcus, you have a manifesto, Jerry. Yes. It is a good if you could have shared it. Yes. Some of the time with the listeners, you know. Yeah. The UNI manifesto are the, are the one that Garvey wrote, like African fundamentalism and them. There. No, the UNIA. Oh, yes. Manifesto. I think Mr. Marathon has Manifesto some. for Jamaica? No, yeah, no. Um, the UNI, the UNI, 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 UNI manifesto. manifesto. Yeah. Okay. Are the no. People's political yeah, party. That's, yeah, that's 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 the one I meant. Yeah. Um, oh, yes, which yes. which was which was published before I believe the ni the nineteen twenty nine election. Yes, and it um you know it spoke of things like minimum wage, talk yes. of a yes. university yes. A university here in yes. Jamaica. Yes, and yes. Yeah, concert we are hall, ahead. concert hall. We are ahead of yeah, this performing arts concert and hall. I can tell you when you look at Michael Manley's um nineteen seventies government, you realize the extent to which. Michael was following that manifesto. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to some, to yeah. some amount of respect, he was following that. But yeah. you see, from time to time, I hear that discussion come up. You know? yeah. And I hear people say, boy, even since we, yeah. and a man I say, if you look back on it and tweet it where it needs to tweet. And, and my memory of it, I don't know that it want any much tweaking enough. Yeah. Because look here, since I credit Marcus for globalization, I, and it is globalization we are facing now. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't read that document with sufficient understanding of economics. Yeah, seriously. For, for understanding what the man was getting at, you know. Because we talk about minimum wage and all them things from, from, from way back in them time. Well, look how prepared he was. Listen, Marcus Garvey left St. Ansby and came to Kingston as a teenager. Yeah. And by the time he was 17, I believe it was from he was 17, he was made a supervisor in an industrial situation, a workplace. And was understanding industrial relations and the different tensions and dynamics between the owners of the capital, the owners of the the labor, and the different you know the different um, processes of production and all them kind of thing. And learning very fast as a teenager. And then when there was a dispute, industrial dispute, and the workers struck, he not only instinctively but thoughtfully with thought decided to take the side of the workers. So he was thinking and understanding all of these economics from that young, young age. Yeah. And that is why I must say if you could I get it and, and share it with, with the listeners. Even in 
car. Yeah. I now do all of it one time. Yeah. But, you know. yeah. I have a very interesting document here too that was sent to me by Mrs. Faye Durant. Yeah. Mrs. Faye Durant. The PNP now. No, hold on. Before, I, I just tell you about a document that was sent to me since you talk about manifesto. Yeah. Mrs. Faye Durant sent um, a, she, um, a, a, a document to me. A booklet of the a lecture given by Mr. Earl Jarrett. He was asked to give a lecture recently on emancipation, the lessons and the legacy, development of business enterprises after slavery. Mr. Earl Jarrett, I think, is the head of Jamaica National Building Society. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So, therefore, to hear of him giving a lecture about emancipation and drawing from emancipation lessons and, leg and legacies of development of business enterprises after slavery. This is a, this is supposed to be a good listen and a good read. You know? Yeah, well, well look here. J.N.N.O. Yeah. As a financial institution in Jamaica. Jamaica National Business. I, I always see them as one of the more conscious financial institutions in Jamaica. Yeah. Like we noticed even recently, you know, since week again, I think, them put up a 50 million um, US account so that, so that business people, because, you know, Coming up to September, the demand for foreign exchange are going to pick up. Yeah. Uh, people stack up for the December run and all yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah. And, and to see them do that at this time, is a very forward, very conscious move. You know? And if you notice, even since the whole discussion about crowdfunding and all that, yeah. JN have a crowdfunding thing, even though them light for NGOs and, and community organizations, but it's still a forward move. Nobody else no make no move on that up yeah. till now. Yes, I know it is. You know. Well, you know how Jamaica National started? It started in Westmoreland by a young uh, British uh, person. It was um, uh, Reverend Reverend um, Clark, Henry Clark, who was Oxford educated in Britain, and then came out here as a teenager and went to Westmoreland and started the Westmoreland Building Society in sometime in the 1880s. And uh, he, a, a number of church people worked with him on, on this development, and it was a, rare, a way really of making a contribution to the liberation of the black poor natives of Jamaica uh, liber and liber li and li li liberation of um, of their economic yes um, without mu which, muscle too without which you have no political liberation yeah. <laughs> um, you know? because when you pull when you pull economic muscle together more energy is released more than the, the, more than the sum of the parts yeah but um, yeah and political political freedom is nothing without economic emancipation. Uh, what the building and society was, really was, it was a, it was a, a development or a, a, a development on the partner system. Partner is a basic yeah. thing. Then now you, you have a former society, a building society, where mm -hmm. we come together and help you to build your house. Then when your house finish, the next one get the partner draw will build his house, mm -hmm. and so on and so on. And, and in turn, you go and pay back for the house. Mm -hmm. And that financed the next house building and so on. And that was that was um, a Jamaican cultural uh, phenomenon, which they used to call day for day. So did building societies uh, exist anywhere else before Jamaica? Not that I'm aware of. I doubt of. it, I doubt it. Not that I'm aware of. And we have to come in, Earl Jared, to really keep up to the tradition and the culture, you know? Yeah. Now the PNP. Yeah. Uh, over recent times, Jerry, uh, you, you've been saying it has been hijacked. Yeah. And, and, and right, rightly so, you know? Yes. It, 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 you really get the feel that like the PNP has been hijacked. Yeah. None of the, 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 the socialist tradition is, is there anymore. Either, either the methodology or the aims and objects are hardly visible. Yeah, and and you, you you get the impression that it, it, it really is headed now by some some grabbers grab for me, you know. Yeah, opportunity arises and people grab opportunities. But Mr. Louis Marriott well knows 
that the eradication of the, so, of the doctrinaire and practical socialists in 1952 was not agreed with by some of the founding members, including Howard Cook. That's correct. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I, I slipped up here because I'd wanted to do an interview with him on Ken Hill specifically. With um, Howard Cook? Yes. Before he was incapacitated? Be, because um, Howard Cook did not agree that the, um, that the left wing of the PNP should have been um, expelled. expelled or the union the Trade Union Congress yeah. um, disaffiliated. Yeah. He didn't agree with it. And as you, men, and as you mentioned that, you notice how, how we practice politics. Because that, that left wing there, which I suspect at the time was a minority in, within the party. Minority in numbers, but, well, they, but they were the hard workers. Not yeah. only that, not only that, the real forerunner of the PNP the manner um, um, around which the progressive movement coalesced was Ken Hill. He was a real, he was an architect. Yes, but I mentioned minority to say that. We, we as a people, I notice we don't take kindly to difference of opinion within a group. You mean accommodating difference? Yeah, well, yeah. And I mean, think when a group of a majority position and, and a next position. It, it makes the group stronger, stronger. Stronger, stronger, But But we have a way where our oh, friend must always tell we yes and if you, are, if you say no, you are not a friend and it, it cause a whole heap of feelings and that is not good enough. Garnet, I need yes. for, I need to go to some other call. Yeah, call, ca call again before the program. Yes. Good, good morning, welcome to yes. Straight Up, hello. Morning, welcome to Straight Up, hello. Yes, good morning, welcome. Go ahead. Yes, welcome, welcome, good morning. Hello? Yes, welcome, please, hello. Yes, yeah, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. Long time when I called in about me, move to call from the other day because I want to make some statement before yes. me. Yes. Before me start to war with you, I'm going to start to you up first. You, you want to start what? I'm going to war with you, but I'm going to big you up first. Oh, you're going to butter me up, oh, I understand. No, man, I tell you the truth, everything. You think, say, your, your family. Yeah. A very distinguished family yeah. and they re represent patriotism and uh, you know your you and Richard and yourself yeah. I must say that as a young younger man I admire your courage I admire your commitment to Jamaica and your non-partisan honesty that uh hello yes ma'am I hear you I'm not, and also, I am, I'm not dumb, dumbfounded I hear you. and also one day, it's like where Jesus is a Saul and turned into Paul. Yes. That has happened to you because we know, say, within you, deep within you, yes. the, 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 the principle of Christianity is planted, you know. Yes. But time will, time will manifest that. No, yeah, listen yeah, me now. Yeah, yeah man, I, then, then you know well planned, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right. Now. I ain't beer to you now. Yes, listen me now. Yeah. I used to be one of those callers, you see, yeah. who was a tribalist. Yeah. Since we reach 50, we decided to uh, It makes no sense because the people of Jamaica have accepted the two parties. Yeah. When one in, the other one out. Yeah. And I would, I vow that I will never do anything in sense. Any side. I was sympathetic to the GLP. I had my PMP also. But most of my tribalistic utterances were, you know, based on um, sympathy for the GLP, right? Yeah. So after we reach 50, we say, it makes no sense because when we do this thing, it just divides our people more. Divides us and cause more bitterness. Because I, I have relatives to one side and you know, I, I don't think it helps us over the last 50 years. It has, it has dogged us. What, help, has, what, what, what don't help us? The, 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 the tribal, the right, tribal okay. parties are right, may, may I say something here now? Yes. What I think is not helpful, you see? Yes. Is when people ha um, follow the thread, the trend, sorry, follow the trend of blocking their mind, blocking out of their mind the widening of the contenders, widening of the pool of contenders. I don't so, know. So, so, so when you have a, a country or when you have a competition, 
Yeah. Where there are only two main teams at the track and field championship every year. Only two main teams. Or in the football competition, there's only two main teams. The quality of that football not going to go much further. So therefore now, the time has more than passed and come, more than come for the courage of the uh, Jamaican people, of the African people, especially in Jamaica, but of all the rest in Jamaica, to come together in a way to provide some more other contenders, seeing other contenders apart from these two worthless horses. Eh? I've, I've had some magnificent um, running and races where they win. But there's some old horse now. We should be ashamed that we have two old horse, I bet, from, from two old stable. And we're afraid, yeah. for, we're afraid for go breed. When I say breed, I don't mean go jump no horse, you know. But we're afraid, yeah. we're afraid for go um, set up some other stable and bring some new thoroughbred into the race. That is the solution, you know. If, yeah. Bol if Bolton and um, Asafa Powell was the only two runners in Jamaica, Jamaica's standard of, of, tra of sprinting would not be where it is, and we wouldn't have no relay team, because two men can't run four by two. Four yeah, by that two. is true. That is true. But my disappointment now is, let me just say, first of all, you see, yeah. I, I listen to Garnet over the years, right? Yeah. You hear me? Yes, sir. And I think he's a hypocrite. That's, I'm, I'm going to bring on that talk. You know why? I admire his um, utterances yeah. about Jamaica yeah. and progress. Yeah. You hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, but what he does, God, I heard him on another program. He, he, he seemed to don't have the courage and the enlightenment to say to when he see dire, this, anything that is trying to divide our people, to say, no, that must stop. He seemed to want to be popular with, you know, other people. Talk show, who are damaging this whole thing that I say we put behind us. Let me tell uh, you what I'm No, talking. hold on. We can't go too far because there are some other callers and they will get discouraged. But, 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 but hold on. Before we go, because I spend, I give you more than the usual amount of time. You know. But I like to just say what I said. Yes, I know you would like to, but that's going to cause two other callers credit to run out. But I just want to say this. I, I don't have to call back then. Yes, no, but listen to me. I just want yes. to say this. If, I, if another person's behavior does not please you, that does not make them necessarily a hypocrite. No, but you see, if Mr. 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 No, no, Carl, I just want to hold on. We can't, if we go further, go and defeat my purpose of going to another call. All right, my call. But I'm just, yeah. just saying that another person's behavior not pleasing you. You're supposed to talk for Jamaica. No. I'm supposed to talk for No, but you're still, you're still, you're still, you're not winning. You don't want to learn nothing either. No. You don't want to yeah, hear. Man, I'm I am here. saying another person's behavior not pleasing you does not qualify them necessarily as being a hypocrite. Okay. Thank you very much. Call again later. Yeah, man. Yeah, let's go to another call. Good morning. Welcome. Back. We'll go, we'll go for a break. Yes, welcome back to Straight Up. Um, good morning and welcome to Straight Up. Hello? Hello, good morning. Welcome to Straight Up. Where are you? Yes, sir. How are you doing? Morning, morning. So, how are you going? Not over. One over. Glad to be over today. Um, yeah. No, that man who called Garnet, you profit. No, do find him, do find him. Yeah. Me don't know him. But, so, so what man says something, we'll shoot, we don't like. Yeah. You know, because my Garnet can't read money, you know. Do you hear me? Yeah, but it's not a reading competition still. Yeah, me know, but you, when you're busy with that man, you profit. You're pissed, you're out of there. Anyway, yeah. me tell you, say, Rasta love squatting and love freeness. Rasta love squatting and freeness? Yeah, you hear me? And I'm not going to say that you're facing out of there, you know. Huh? I am not going to say that you face down with that. I mean, I can't prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. Yes, man, I know. Up, up, but, up, but, up, but, up, right? Yes, yes. You must fight for it. And I'm going to lie to Miguel. Yeah. You want Miguel to go back court free. I that don't want free. So am I wrong? Am I right? We Miguel and we grow up on it. No, I don't know. You see, me is a face to man. I'm out of that. So you don't ask me what me say. I'm going to tell you some out of that thing. Well, go ahead, man. No, you not, 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 you not on the ear. When you come off of the ear, I tell you some blue, no problem, I will. blue light. Well, you, no. you know a blue light? No, no problem, man. You don't know what I mean. I'm all on you. 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 What you having? Huh? What you having? What me having? Yeah. Come again, repeat. What you having? The drink? Yes, man. No, me have some chocolate cheese with mine. But me have no more. No, that, that, is, that was then, but this is now. Well, me just having a conversation with you now. A what? I just having a conversation with you. Okay, okay. Uh, later on, right? No, you're done already. No, no, you was telling me. No, why you tell me more how Rasta face out of that? 
um, they want too much Swedish girl, better give it. Yeah. Um, they, they might fight for the land. Yeah. Back up someone, you want to give the land if you fight the case. Yeah. You want... You hold want on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Miguel Land make complaint to you. But, no, but, but Mr. Van TV is saying withdraw that fund because of um, money, money, um, why is it? Him tell you because it's money? You pay the television, you don't tell me. No, it's not because the vice cartel case. No, hello. Me talking about the land of... You just say that you put words in my mouth all the while. No. You do land of a penny club, but what person got you, Moshe? Yeah. I'm talking about that one, brother Jerry. Yes. Miguel Land saying withdraw because he don't get a, a pay. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And a different boy, I believe a woman to go be me out if she get paid herself no. Yeah. So you 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 fight for free land or you can't pay lawyer. You know fight for free land. Sense. You are right in there, you can't talk anything. Because you come here and then then she ship and you get land. Me, you me, you, me, you, me, you me not get no man. Me yes, I you know. refuse the ticket for go back to India. And you, get, and you get land. Listen, I remember and that, 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 and that's how, short history. And that's how it's supposed to go. Me me get short it's either repatriation or piece of land of Jamaica. My father come from, my grandfather come from Cape, come to Cape, he had, he had slave. Cape clear. Yeah, over his desert. Um, 1914. A slave, not a slave. No, Indian come here as no slave. Well, well, in in Densha. In Densha. Hold on, man. 1914, the bush of my own man, he was a lindo. Yeah. What the most property owner in Jamaica? Yeah. All right. In buy a land, no one send a blue bag over there. Yeah. United States. Yeah. And my father, my grandfather, was a good worker. I didn't care him down there in family. Yeah. And plus I need a Indian. And when he go down, he never lie down and spend about four years. Yeah. And he come back to Bellefield in St. Mary there and buy three quarters of your land. Where's the Bellevue? Bellefield. Oh. In St. Mary. Yeah, Bellefield in Manchester. No. Yeah. You have one in Bellefield and St. Mary there. Yeah. You buy three quarters of your land there, yeah. and you start in life there, until your father gets away and things. Yeah. And my father go to Cuba, I tell you, you buy two of your land, the 30 pounds of Bellfield, Holland. Yeah. Bellfield, big one. You have a line, Holland, coffee piece, pen, works, and all them things there. Yeah. So, if you, if you make it you find easier, you come from Bellfield, Holland, and you come from Bellfield, line, but you go out to the line, then direct you. You follow what I mean? Follow the line. Anybody follow the line, I follow the train or anything. So, so you hear me now? Yeah. Yo, Ganguro Maraj, him, him, him face and ang ungrudgeful to an out of there. What's that name? Ganguro Maraj. Where might be where they want to go? Where used to live? Phoenix. Me know no one about him. I tell you now, Ganguro Maraj, I am, I am the, I am of Phoenix. Me, 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 so, so you say Rasta out of there, but I don't know if Ganguro Maraj is out of there. So, how Ganguro Maraj is there? Now, you buy it? Then, eh? You buy it and you capture it? You buy it. All right. And it's Rasta buy it, and then you still tell you say out of there. Where's the buy it now, man? Where's the capture, man? Then, how uh, Ganguro Maraj? All right, let me give you a joke with your brother. And you can't bring no division between Rasta and India, you know? You, you. Let me give you a joke with your brother, now, Mr. Yusumar. When you was the Minister of Finance one time, you remember? You hear me? Yeah. He wanted to raise the truck license from 3,000 to, to 30,000 now. Yeah. And me, me Philip Coombs, called on court for him. And get out all the truck man them. Yeah. They were all a meeting. Yeah. And them, they set up a date with him. Yeah. And him, um, he bowed to them. He bowed to them? Yeah, yeah. Um, I can tell you, check them. Um, he wanted to raise the license truck per ton. Yeah. 10,000 a ton. My truck was 70, 700 degrees. That is 3, 3 ton and a uh, half. Yeah. 3, 3 ton and a uh, half. So three, ten, or thirty. Thirty, I told me, and people must be my joke. Yeah. And when you, the people, the three men will represent the group, what they, you might be telling them what they say. I don't remember what you say. I don't remember what you say. But you see him here when you see him, you see him telling what the Minister of Finance. Yeah. Yeah. And I call on crowd by him, you know. You call on crowd by him? Yeah, man. I go, I went to meet my friend here in Baba. You saw one place in your party, I went to. What the place is there? Party Hire Ridge, we are here at Chief and Party Hire Ridge? Yeah, Party Hire Ridge. Yeah. Um, Peter Stewart, you have it, and you sell it to a job to a man named Baba. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you know, um, you know Cooley Boy? Yeah, man, don't talk to you in the family. Yeah. Cooley Boy come and Robbins be, you know, man, come and see him this week, you know. That's why I ask if you know him. I know he's a saint, man. Yeah, man, come and Robbins be, me come and Bellfield, come and Bellfield, come and tell you. What color, the panty I come and have, what color? The panty, man. The no, no, I've been with them pants. I don't be with them pants. The Pontiac. The Pontiac where I'm of what color it is. I don't remember, brother Joe. I don't tell you. Yeah, but, but you can't, but, you, but you know. I'm not happy in there. He's short and he's about, you know, he's six feet. No. All right, and he's curly. Yeah. 
Um, in my sister, you know, Ubi. Yeah. In my mother was uh, some children for China, you know. Yeah. Yeah, cool boy, brother. You mind your jacket yourself, you know. You will no, tell, man, no, you man. Will, you will tell life on yourself. Tell life on yourself? Yeah. As somebody who know you, you know, brother, you have tell you, brother, you come out shoot. Eh? Name what? Come out shoot. Come out shoot? Yeah, you will show you a Chinese woman here as well. Chinese man. Woman name as well? Chinese man, uh, um, Chinese man wife. That's why wife here is Mrs. Miss as well. Yeah. Yeah. We better win to school, um, by Robbins Bay Road. Yeah. I didn't use a shop. Yeah. You better you come out to have Chinese. Yeah. Who do buy brother? Yeah. Yeah. So, me, 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 no go and call and talk and talk with water and mouth. And when me don't say, boy, I'm sorry, me apologize. No. No. Me, you know, me tell you what me know. Yeah. What me don't know, me don't tell you. But what's the man if you find money and people are here, if you, um, you find their case. Yeah. You have a good one. Anyway, you, know. you get tickets for go back in there and you refuse it. And you no, get... me don't get none, but me don't you, get no, none. No, you refuse the ticket and you get land for that and that's a me deal. Me say no, man. Me if you walk and walk and buy a ticket. Yeah, how you get, how your people them get land? Me, 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 me say my grandfather buy three quarters, you get land, no. man. It's the money, the lump sum of money, I'm getting taken by the No, man. Yes, all right. No, brother, Jerry. Yes, it's all right. I tell you, man, you don't let me talk to you living. Me, man, no, I don't know him, no. Listen carefully. But my daddy teach me and tell me no problem with him. What, 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 what I'm saying? All right, you must, you hear me? Yeah. Um, Mr. Jagger, what would I do every day? You might write a book, you see? Yeah. Every book, I don't know, we can't pick up your arm. We can't pick up your arm. Mark, who am I with you from home? Yeah. And, um, you hear him by the way, the other way? Yeah. No, man, no, me, you might just hear right now. No, man, I don't hear me here, man. Javed ga, Jagai, yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. man, this one, you know, uh, anyway. You know Javed Jagai? Where you live, Papa, because you, yeah? I don't know where him live, but him have filed a lawsuit in a Trinidad and Barbados. No, that. no, me don't know that. No, him said that him want to travel into Trinidad and Barbados with him boyfriend. And the law down there don't want him to travel with him boyfriend. Well, me don't know what's for Thank you for telling me. No, but I tell you. But, but, but me no know, me, 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 me tell you no. Well, yes. the guy you me from the you know, No, because him, him, them a fight for him, for same-sex marriage in the Jamaica, Javed, Javed. Oh. Anyway, this guy write, write a book already, I write the next one. Yeah. So he said he called me around here one day, and um, he said he called for me. Yeah. And he said, me, me tell me, me, me tell him what me know about my grandfather and so. Yeah. He said, yes, what my father tell me, me tell you. Yeah. And when he, uh, me tell him, the ship when my father come up, you see? Yeah. He said, you're jam right, see the book, you're the book right now. My, by, by far, I come 19, 1899. Yeah. June 1899. Yeah. And he born 1900, about six, seven yes, months after I come. Yes, I know, he born six, born six months after he come. About six, seven months, yeah. All right, okay. All right. All right. So, um. All right, what you having? What you having? Yes. Me not have side of the You have it already, you have something already. Yeah, you. man, me have something already. My All coffee right. and okay. dumpling and... Yes, sir. Have a good way for us. Yes, yes, yes. All right, later on. Ah. Me, 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 me not leave you, but you want to put the word in my mouth. No, no, no. Let me tell you what me know, yes, sir? When me don't know, you can't tell me, and me appreciate that. Yes, sir. Nobody don't know, the current man saying something, you know. Yes. You don't know everything. No, no. You hear about him, man, you call Bally Singh, what I tell you about? Bally Singh, yeah. Yeah, you barrister, man. Yes, yes, I know him. Where you hear about him? And, and, um, you have one next one, you know, was Dolly Thompson, friend, what's his name again? I forget what's his name, man, um. But you have Miss McGarry. Tell me you know about Miss McGarry. Come from Guyana. An Indian lawyer come from Guyana. Great lawyer. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. I have an idea here, but you can't go to me most right now. But tell me where you have about this thing. I can't tell you now. I have to tell you up the year. I know, I know, I know. You have to slander nobody. Huh? I don't know if you slander nobody. No, but you just slander you small like a while though. No, I'm not saying to you. You can't put me a coat. No, you no. Want, you want to go raise the tax? Yeah, yeah. You want All to right. tax, the, tax the people? Um? Yes, yes. Alright, half, half a go here, sir. Alright, uh, one go. Yes, okay. Yeah. Yes, good morning. Welcome back to the street. Hello? Hey, Jerry. Yes, sir. What's going on? Well, I'm going to listen to the program. Yeah. Yeah, well, hey, I have some bad experience about this JPS, you know. Oh, like what? When I'm... The, the, so, well, my cut off the light, they cut it off about five times in five minutes. Oh, them cut off your light all the while? That, oh, they, they have a power system, but they just shut off, shut off, shut off, shut off the light, you know, bedroom. Yeah, like, well, you see, like how rain fall, like how rain never fall for a long time. Yesterday when it fall, it, it caused some light to go off, you know. I know yesterday alone, man, but, but some more later continue. Yeah. So the, the, all your light now, them root it up. Come again? 
Like you're like them, root it up. What do you mean root it up? Out of the garden. No. <laughs> so go on. Eh? Hey, uh, you better go in at that, brethren. Because I'm not a thief for life. I don't know what's not about thief. But, but do you go like to me, you idiot? Eh, where's a God thief from thief? Um, where's a thief thief hey, from? Hey, I don't talk about that. I don't talk about that, no, man. Hey, this, this, this woman who is uh, five times to get a boss, man. Yeah, yeah. I believe that is uh, not true. Then you don't know that you have some young woman that have abortion like every year. My doctor can get abortion five times. Yeah. You know, better she will get tired. I take birth control. No, no, but, but maybe she want to have, to be able to have children when the right man come. Maybe it's after, maybe it's after the pregnancy, she, she, the man make a, the man make a bad move and she say, me cancel him. But you shouldn't be talking about this thing like joke. Cause not, okay. a, not a joke. You shouldn't be talking what? I said maybe it's after having experience with the man them down the line, down the road after she's pregnant. She so low man, turn up the club and come more man. So low, even me with pony pony phone, we can't hear you. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot. You have some. You have some women who have a lot of abortion. Plenty. 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 I don't believe that it's true, man. That you're running some joke. With no, Five no, no, doctors, you have some doctors can tell you things that you wouldn't believe. But anyway, you keep away from it. <laughs> Thank you more. Thank you very much. Good morning and welcome to Straight Up. Hello? Hello? Morning. Yes, sir. Welcome. Morning, sir. Welcome, welcome. Mr. Small. Yes, sir. I am quite, I heard you are Mr. Tracy the other day, you see? Oral Tracy, yes. Yes, and I wanted to use a word about what you are describing, my favorite girl, but it's not, it is family, it is more, it is their radio. Your favorite girl is who? Mr. Small, the most known woman, the one the lady, the, that gorgeous young woman who runs the 400 meters of the man. Oh, Kali Spencer. Why you must call her name, sir? <laughs> Why? What's wrong with her name? Not there, because, because, I mean, me hear you and Mr. Tracy having the word I want to use as Mr. Tracy is dear with us, so we're not going to use it. Yeah. Mr. Tracy was there with my his own Tracy. Yeah, he's a beautiful lady. Wow, boy, he's a pity I'm an old man now. I'm yeah. a mature man <laughs> going over his there now. Otherwise what? I would walk and I just go take her off the, the truck and say, listen, man, I want you, you know. Yeah. You want, just want to but, but you would have come like a hurdle. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, well, you know what? It's, 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 it's like jumping over the hurdle. I'll climb a mountainside for her. Yes, you. Yeah. I have two issues on though. It is that even I heard Garnet this one talking about the, the four H's and all that and the leftist movement and all that in, in yeah. Jamaica. The issue I am having with the development of Jamaica is that unlike Lee Kuan Yew, who did something that, that was Singaporean, and I, I don't know if there's such a term. Yeah. We keep hopping to the leftist ideology, Bustamante said that he was with the West. And then when Michael Malik came in, we, 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 we moved to the left. We, we got the Soviet bloc. To this day, we haven't come with anything that is the Jamaican experience, the Jamaican model. Yeah, well... And I mean, every time I say it, right around the road, this book, how Europe on the rule of Africa, and everything we take, we take it from Europe. We don't, no, we don't take from them. They take from us. Yeah, but, 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 but we give up and policy what they have. Them take from us. And, and most of the political leaders, all of the political leaders, especially since, um, especially since independence, they, they only serve the purpose of making Jamaica safe for investment by those who want to pump out plenty more than what them leave here. We don't anybody have a business or not them going you're not going people not going go into business unless they are allowed to take out some of them profits. But yeah. but they are allowed they are allowed to encourage to take out far more than what them leave here. Yeah. Far more than what benefit the workers and people of Jamaica. Yeah. But most of these political leaders are quite fine going along with that kind of yes, thing. Yes, and that, 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 well, the other issue again I have now is that our education system, I was saying, the only school that we have maybe under 60, that the traditional high school, I think, is born the high school, some of 51, uh, they're about, you have Campion and Campion was a paid school earlier than come up good. Your Catholic, which was a school that has been around 
earlier on, close down and reopen front court. All the other schools that we have, they're over 60 years old. Yeah, and therefore... So, so, so the traditional, what we call traditional, traditional high school, they have been here from before we begin independence, right, 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 from the institution that, the institutions that we build since independence, that right. are traditional, that the right. open can't stop with the and, traditional school then. Anyway, one thing I can tell you, some, 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 sometimes with um, the things that are traditional, changes can be applied to them. For instance, when I was going to high school, all of my interest was in mechanical development. Mechanical development. My father no want me pay no attention to that. My school don't have any... Um, yeah, tell my story. Well, 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 my school don't have no kind of training facility. My, mm -hmm. sc my school outside of um, outside of the so-called classical studies, them teach little woodwork and um, little other things like that. But mechanical um, development, which I was very interested in, was not available. But I was so fortunate that my son, when he went to Jamaica College, by that time there was a mechanical department there, and he learned a lot from what, apart from what I taught him and what he learned moving around me, he learned a lot at Jamaica College, and he was able to go further, that in the holidays I get a job for him at a very good mechanical um, establishment in Kingston. And he started to fly, he started to learn to fly when he was a 16-year-old, still going to JC. And by now, Jamaica College also has a flying training institution. And my son leave from JC and go straight into the U.S. Air Force, where he became a, a um, jet engine uh, mechanic. Because he couldn't fly because my eyesight wasn't perfect. But um, it was so great that the kind of things that he wanted to and was able to do is what you I wanted. Yes, sir, Mr. Small. I wanted to do that 40, 50 years, 40, 50 years before. It's so great. Well, you have to tell me my story. Yeah. I wanted to be a mechanic. I love mechanical things. I went to Woolworths. Yeah. And then during my time, jar that just opened. Yeah. But how could you go to Woolworths and want to go to German automotive? That was when the people never got to high school. Yeah. No, my son was the first class on a degree, degree mechanical, in mechanical engineering. Wow. Because what happened is that I, everybody I said, I live my life through that boy now. Well, my old man wanted to live him life through me. He wanted me to become a lawyer, but he forced it. Now, I never forced my son. I leave him voluntarily, and he no, went, he went. Me, I guide him. He, I, he, I line him up yeah. right up with it. If my old man never fo try force me or try beat out of me the mechanical tendency that I have, maybe I would have do both law and mechanics or the law. Okay. No, in but, my but, case, but in I fact, wanted, I wanted, because he don't want to do me 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 mechanical. When, when I found construction, I love it. I love construction. Yeah. And I push my son towards civil, and he tried to honor me. Where it's, it's like mechanical covers a, le a, a level of structure and he loves electrical and he loves all of the engineering. Same so said, at the mechanical, I take what I love yeah. and take certain things that you love. But, uh, it, but, 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 but it's quite good, sir. All right, but and then, I, say, I don't want your Mr. Tracy to talk about favorite girl. All right, well, well, we're going well, to, that's we're, a warning, sir. We're going to leave your colleagues alone. All right, God bless you. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. We're going to take a couple more calls, but we have to bring in Mr. Louis Marat here. Good morning and welcome to Straight Up. Hello. Morning, sir. Welcome, sir. How are you doing? Not bad. It's so interesting that you wanted to be a mechanic, right? Yeah. But you didn't get a chance. To. Why? No, well, I took the chance still, but I never get it down the formal way. I know, I know. Is, is it because the education system doesn't hit? No, no, it's not that. You know, my old man just tried to discourage me out of it. Anyway. So where would you have gotten it? In, you would have gotten it at JC? No, it's not at JC. There are other places. I know I, I, I know Jamaicans who have become qualified as mechanical engineers and are ex excellent mechanical engineers. One of them was a white Jamaican man. No, no, no. You, I'm not talking about exceptions. I'm talking about a normal system that would, would whenever you want a career choice from as early as you were going to. Yeah. It was a facility in, in, in our education. That's what I'm telling you, that at my school there was no facility. But exactly, are, but that's the point I'm also making. Yeah. So the education system has this thing where where you're supposed to get out of the plantation and go straight into the office in the AC. But on the other hand, the same Jamaica College is now providing for yeah, the year. I know, I know it, it has changed and it's changing. And even the Minister of Education yeah. is now emphasizing. As a matter of fact, they have this new thing they call STEM, yeah. which is more focused on, on, on skills and, and so forth. Yeah, yeah. But I remember even Mikey Bennett about 10 years ago, this producer, right? Yeah. He was saying that we should have more technical school. I was saying it long, long ago yeah. before that, yeah. right? Even though I'm younger than even Mikey Bennett. Yeah. But 
But I'm seeing where I've, I'm, I'm being in communities where the person who go to train and um, in training and having a skill, they usually come out much better. Yeah, than even the teachers. much more prosperous though. Yes, and and owning them own business. Yeah, because all early, early. All Boot Stewart. Boot Stewart wasn't too much of an academic person. Exactly. But, yeah, but what him, Jamaica him. has um, done wrong is having this emphasis and this education which, without defining what it is anyway, all about and what it is for. Yes, but uh, oh, we have a responsibility not just to leave education to the educational system and the schools, but we as parents have a responsibility to, to be to run a co a co um, a coexistent educational system that where the family makes sure that the children get other education and training apart from the formal system along with the formal system. And no, I'm, 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 I don't necessarily agree with that. What we must look is trend and, and know that we need this as a government, as planning. Yeah, that is government, government, but we as a family... We have to be a government for our children and provide certain things for them. Nobody know, would leave out them children out of and, yes. and, and would one, one more comment I want to make before I go. Every skill that, almost every skill that I have, I pass it on to my children from an early age. So my children, them, them start draw. All of my children draw and make greeting cards like home used to make greeting cards. Yeah, yeah. All of my children learn fuse camera. All of my children learn... Right, fuse. you expose them to a yeah. lot of things. Yeah, them learn for bake. Them learn for bake. Them learn for drive exactly. from the mail. You know, and then they choose whatever they want. Yes, sir. A lot of times we, we, we cage them up into this theory education, which is just coming back to write books and history and all that kind of crap. And it's not production. Yeah, really. yeah. But look here, I wanted to ask you something about this African thing, oh. where you, your, your focus is to go back to Africa. What, what not, is it? Not only to go back to Africa. Focus is to reclaim Africa. Mm. In addition to the whole empire, when we done PF, I PF yes already. But our it's people. A practical thing in your lifetime. But but what? in my lifetime, we start going there. I've been there more than one time, and when I go to Africa, I stay with my brethren who I sent there before. Me and my brethren send people there, and when we go there, we not stay in a hotel. We stay in my brethren yard. No, I'm, I'm talking about coming back, going and not coming back. We are going back and forth. We will <laughs> not be. You think a joke? Very easy. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's a fact. I'm telling you, we will not be confined, and Jamaica will be our. Right, hey, look here, you take this is a joke, man. I think I see you talking. Now. We will not be confined. Jamaica will be our trading outpost for the next thousands of years, uh, unless a um, nuclear explosion blow it up. It's not a joke. I hear you, Lord. All of the nations of the world that have any sense, then become a worldwide and a far-flung enterprise. Of course. We're not going to be confined. We're going to spread out more than contract. Well, I just want clarity on your gift. Well, thank you very much, yes, sir. Hey, good morning. Well, go for a break straight up. Good morning and welcome to Straight Up. I'm your host, um, Jerry Smart. Mr. Mr. Louis Marriott, you were asking me something. Yes, I wondered if I can ask you another question, Jerry. Um, you said that you, your real name, uh, you, you announced it this morning, is Robin. So I wondered how you came to be Jerry. Well, you know that um, usually families designate more than one name to children it's for different reasons we have the family name usually taken by the, the head the male the father the family usually take the name in the west because in some in some places the family take the male the name take take the name of the mother i think fidel castro name fidel castro ruiz ruiz, ruiz. isn't that his mother that's his mother's name I think so. Yes, yeah, so I have both the father and mother name. Same thing in Ethiopia. They have a common sons in some tribes. They have a combination of both mother and father name. Well, now my my mother's father, she had he had sorry he had four daughters and three sons. Up to now, as far as I remember, none of the sons had any sons. The sons had daughters. All three sons had daughters. And when I was born. Them give me my grandfather family name Carr. Because up to that time none of the three sons them never have no sons, so there was no third generation car. So them put car in my just like how them put Pusey in my brother Richard. My grandmother named Pusey and them named my brother Richard Louis Pusey Small. It gave him a little trouble when him go to JC because most of the JC boys used to mispronounce Pusey. <laughs> Deliberately, to I their <laughs> to their delight, you know. There's one little license where them they have could talk certain kind of words. You know? 
But anyway, so anyway, them, them name me Robin Small. Robin names are Carl Small. R.A.S. Me left out the cake because it's really my, um, it's really my grandfather family name. So my relation was R.A.S. I write my book on Ugo Vaz and the teacher beat me so I write bad with R.A.S. <laughs> she you never heard of Rastaf, right? No, but is that no probably is either that or the, or the other word. She vexed both, but my, I used to see my brother them school book at JC book. Them, them always write them initials in them book. Them don't write out them whole name. So I start take up that habit from prep school of writing my initial. Teacher say R.A. is not my book. And give me beat. Until Miss Vaz, who is my cousin now, tell her, say, no, this is his name. This is his initial. But she called me one side and said, don't write no more initials in your book. But anyway, at Jamaica College, um, at Jamaica College, I used to relieve myself by exercising a sense of humor. I was passing through some difficult times. Sometimes I don't even want to go my evening time. Because there was a little breakdown between my old lady and old man. And, you know, going home became very unpleasant. And I stopped doing the schoolwork. I stopped the schoolwork and... Not making an excuse, but I stopped the schoolwork because I, I was far advanced to this, this class. The, the things that I was learning at VAS, at 78 years old, is things that they must teach at JC in third and fourth form. So for years, I never had to do much work. And apart from that, as I said, certainly little unpleasantness going on at home. So I'm also relieved myself by exercising a sense of humor. And one teacher suggested to, to the class that um, me act like Jerry Lewis. So them start calling me Jerry. Jerry Lewis was a white Jewish comedian. White Jewish American um, comedian. What do you call him? Comedian? Was he a comedian or yeah, was he, that uh, multi-talented? He was actor? in partnership with um, Dean Martin. Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Yeah, they were like a duo. A, a, a stand-up comic and you know, a straight man. Yeah. Um, anyway, so them start calling me so at um, 1959 or 60. Yes, Louis, but your mm. family. Yes. Your family is very um, outstanding and artistic. Very but, much. But tell us in, more about in, Louis Marriott. Tell us more about um, Alvin Marriott. Alvin, the sculptor. Yeah. Yes. Um, well, he... When he was 12 years old, um, wandered off into the bushes. In Portland area? Uh, that would have, no, that would have been in St. Andrew, I think. St. Andrew? Yeah. The hills of St. Andrew? Uh, yes. They were born in Essex Hall, my father and uh, most of, well, certainly the older members of, yeah. or, or his older siblings. And the nearest big town would be where? The, uh, well, they moved to, the nearest big town would be Kingston. But they no, moved well, well, I mean, Hill, Hill, Hill Town. Hill Town. Um, I suppose Lawrence Tavern would yeah, have, yeah. Yeah, Lawrence Tavern Hill. would have been in the, the, the nearest. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, my grandfather, that's my paternal grandfather, yeah. uh, was a craftsman. B both, both, both parents, both of my father's parents, were artists and craftspersons. Yeah. My grandmother wrote plays, and she was also musical, yeah. and she staged uh, her works in a, <laughs> a theater at, built at the home. Um, there was a mound on which the mound was used as a stage. A mound is like a rising on, yes. the, on the earth. And then there was a hillock yeah. um, that sloped down towards the stage. So, so and my grandfather um, built bamboo benches. This yeah. is a place that, that, by the way, has a lot of bamboo trees. Yes, yes. And he built bamboo benches on the hillock, sloping down, so that you got a natural, a nat natural rise of sloping to the stage. Yeah. Uh, she did her concerts mainly to benefit concerts and plays, to benefit local church. So you'd have to fence off the yard then? Uh, I don't or know that they did. Our people wouldn't try to violate I them. don't know that they did, but um, it was a gentler, yeah, um, so, so, yeah. less, less rapacious society. So, yeah, at that time. And, yeah, and I think more orderly. And uh, that, that was her side now. She was a playwright. She used, by the way, family, neighbors, and friends so as, as her cast, mm. yes. And because she was musical, she was a Woolmerian, by the way. Um, and so growing her, up in the hills there, so how yes. she would board at Woolmers or go down every day? No, she, she, I think she, I don't think she boarded. Mm. Um, no. 
And um, her father was a lawyer, by the way. That's your, that's your, uh, he, he, that is what, your grandmother? He was Maury. Yeah, my grandmother's father. That's yeah, my great, yeah. uh, great grandfather. Yeah. And um, she married this man named Marriott, who was a craftsman. Yeah. Um, superb craftsman. And I suppose Uncle Alvin's, uh, the, the influence of the craft in the family, uh, moved Uncle Alvin to go into the bushes and do, do a sculpture of a lion. Now, of course, we didn't have lions in Jamaica, so he would have seen, no doubt, photographs or drawings, drawings, yeah. drawings of lions. And um, it was noticed. You know, everybody thought that there is some talent here. And he went on, and he was a self-taught sculptor. And he used to sculpt, among other things, furniture. Um, and at one stage of his life, he was actually employed at a furniture shop um, where he did carvings. On the o furniture? Only recently. Carvings on, on the furniture? On the furniture. Only recently, um, I sold a table which I had got through the family. It's a family heirloom. Um, and a cousin of mine had sold me this table some 30 odd years ago. And, um, but it was a large table. It's, it's, it's um, five foot six by six foot nine, I think it was. Yeah. And it seated 10. Or I'm uh, sorry, I shouldn't be speaking of the table in the past tense at all, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. the table is still there. Yeah. I sold it, what, less than a month ago to, um, ironically, we wanted to keep it in the family. So my daughter, who is very much a social media person, um, not, not my, my, yeah, my daughter took on the responsibility for marketing this table uh, in, in the family in the family within the family and she um, you know she's into family trees and that kind of thing yeah and she put out this thing I told her to um, ask them to make an offer and whatever offer they made I would for goodwill deduct something from it and she put it out and ironically the table um, the, 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 the family member who apparently felt most addicted to the table happened to be Uncle Alvin's youngest child. Yeah, that's great. So can you imagine living in dining Jamaica? at this table? And yes. No, he doesn't live in Jamaica. None of them lives in Jamaica. Where does he keep um, The only side of my family that lives in Jamaica are the Campbells. That's my... Alvin Cameron. My, Alvin and Frankie. And, Frankie and Campbell. That's, that's, um, and, and Pauline, who was the one who sold me the table. The, yeah. the, only, the only girl in that family of six children. Yeah. What's the name of, the, of, 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 of Campbell's band again? What's the name of the band? Fab Five. Fab Five. Yeah. Fab Five. Frank is the manager. Yeah. And in band fact, leader. he wrote the first song. Yeah, but so people understand band leaders do different things. Grob yeah. Cooper is a musical director. Okay, okay. But Frank is a manager, and he, you know, he takes care of all the business. Yeah, he wrote the first and song, what? It's the first song that Fat Five recorded. Yeah, which one is yes. that? Um, don't remember the title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember that he proudly... No, this was before Fat Five. He was in another little group before Fat Five. And when I was living in England, Frankie was going through school, and he, because he's 12 years younger than I, yeah. and he... Um, he sent me a recording, yeah. Um, yes, and he was actually the lead singer, in fact, in that little group. Yeah. I don't remember their name. And um, the, the table now, uh, my daughter handled the whole of the arrangements, yeah. and uh, Norman was so happy to have this table as Uncle yeah. Alvin's youngest son. Yeah. But of course, a tabletop is a tabletop. It has to be flat. Yeah. But where the beauty of the table was, was in the flutings. Yeah, at, the side. At the top of the, the legs leg. and the, yes, going and the around ball and side. claw at the bottom. Yes, yes. Really, really was something. Uh, I have a, incidentally, a header of Eartha Kitt, which he did. Oh, yeah? Yes. And that was given with them, to me. With them high cheekbones and things. Right. That was given to me after. And by the way, um, my eldest grandchild, uh, who is Priscilla McClure, she is the daughter of one of my two daughters, yeah. the older of my two daughters. And uh, 
Priscilla used to, whenever she visited us um, as a, a baby, she used to be fascinated by this head. Yeah. You know, it was mounted on a wall, and she would always draw close to the head and be just looking at it, you know, as if, as if me me mesmerized. Yeah. Um, now, that took care of Uncle Alvin. Oh, well, my, I, I, well, my grandfather, I, 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 by I, the way. I said, tell him about your granddaughter and thing. Yeah. I got a message from my grandson. I want to listen to it here. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. When I was 18, just after my first child was born, the Commonwealth Games were held in Jamaica. World records were broken. Now, 48 years later, my grandson is here, 18 years old. He is entering the third stage of education. Jamaicans of Josh's age group are doing great things at the Commonwealth Games in Edinburgh. But it's time to eject the ruling family of Britain and outlaw any ruling class in Jamaica. So over to you now, Josh. I'm just looking forward to entering a new stage in my life and hopefully I can spend some more time at the show where I can get advice from some other people who have been through the same things that I'm about to go through now. Well, thanks. I'm so glad you'll be here at the University of West Indies. Straight up, News Talk 93 FM. I'm Jerry Smart. Yes, thank you very much. Um, as you, you were telling me now about your grand something like about your grandfather again. Very good. Yes, my grandfather moved the family to Port Antonio. Yeah. Um, and uh, that aunt, as I well, I mentioned her children, um, Campbell. Yeah. Um, she was the youngest of my father's siblings, mm. and she was actually born in Tor Port Antonio. I don't know if any of the others were born there. Um, but he moved the family to Port Antonio because that was... You moved there too? No, no, that, oh. I, I wasn't around. Oh, oh. That, um, that was because Port Antonio was the cradle of the tourism industry. Tourism yes, yes, just, yes, yes. Just Long before Montego Bay. That's right. Tourism has just started there. And um, he wanted to be near the tourists for his craft business. And he opened a craft shop in Port Antonio. He was so good at his craft, he made Jeepy Japa hats. Panama straw, a kind of Pan straw. Yes, he made Panama hats that he exported to Panama. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Calls to Newcastle. That's right. Um, they, as I said, they, m my grandmother peopled the stage, mainly with family. And my father was the one that carried on this, this tradition. So when I was born, well, at the age of two, I was on stage. Oh, yeah. Yes, my father put me on stage when I was two. Did and he, he did the did he same sort of thing. What did he make you do? I was a little Indian chief. What? I remember that. I remember my first night. I'm a little yeah. Indian chief. I don't oh, remember yeah. anything else. Yeah. But I remember at least, that. At thing. least you weren't a little fire engine. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> anyway, um, my father put on stage, you know, his relatives, close relatives. Yeah and friends uh, and neighbors. I remember one young woman in particular um, named Phyllis MacDonald who got a part when she had been in do working at uh, my father's, father's place. She got a part in a show called Hot Chocolate which Dudley Macmillan staged yeah, I've seen, at, I've seen, at the uh, ward. I've seen advertisements of that. Right? Staged it at the ward and, and I remember people in the like community. Like a black review. Uh, yes, something like that. People in the community were laughing at her because there was great excitement about the fact that she was now going on the stage at the ward as against our backyard, which is where my father had his theater. Wow. And, um, you know, this well-advertised show and all that. And a, a number of people in the neighborhood went to see the show, Hot Chocolate, and came back and reported that, you know, like if you blinked, you might miss Phyllis's performance. It was so short. And my, my, well, my father took a totally different view and chided a lot of people for their attitude to her. Because I remember him saying, and this, he was the first person that, that, that I can recall saying this, that there are no small parts, only small actors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that Phyllis played the part very well. Um, well, on, before you go too far, 
I just want to get a feel in between. Because today is Emancipation Day. It's in recent years, just less than 20 years ago, that it has been re, re recognized in Jamaica. Yes. August has been recognized because of independent and thing. But um, it's a good time to look back, look forward. Um, San Kofa, I think, is, the, is one of the African concepts of looking back to look forward and all that. It's yes. very useful. All, all cultures have this thing. But um, for a feel, people can identify with certain individuals and it gives them a certain feel. When was the first time as a young man that you encountered a person who is very likable for a lot of Jamaicans and people identify with him? A man like a young Wilmot Perkins. When was the first time you and him were a buck up? No, I, well, Wilmot Perkins and I bucked up on a veranda where we were courting two sisters. What? <laughs> That's correct. It's like a hit bingo. Uh, it, that was a, That's when that we was, first that met. Was, that is not an educated guess. Now. That was a shot in the dark. <laughs> That's when we first met. Yeah. Well, you may recall the very first time I sat in the studio with you. Yeah. A f- couple of weeks ago, um, I mentioned Wilmot calling me Comrade Marriott or something like yes, that. Yes. Because what was interesting is that we stuck up we struck up a friendship, you know, courting these two sisters. Yeah, that was in the country or town. And in, in town. In, town. In, I, I never lived in the country. Well, only only very briefly in um, in Mandeville when I um yeah. bef- before I left for England. But you had to court the, on verandas in those times. Yes. Um and uh, you know, it was a certain trade unionist and politician's daughter, yeah. um, or daughters, as, if, as it was. Um, and uh, then I lost sight of Wilmot for some time. Um, you, I, he, he, I both, of you, both of you would be in what, 20s? He was older than I. About um, four years old, I three and a half. I don't know how many He was born 1931, September. Oh well, you would have been less than four years old. Four and a, four and I was born in I was born in May thirty-five. 30, Thirty-five. Three and a half years. Yeah. Uh, and he, I, I went to to Britain, and when I came back, I ended up working as Michael Manley's press secretary. Yeah. That's and a, that's suddenly, about seventy-two, seventy-three. Well, I I started in early seventy-three, and uh, I don't know. It's just strangely, I became his enemy. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, but he he, he or be, called I mean, me. Probably he, being he, my, probably he was being, just hostile to me. Probably being Michael Manley's um, yeah, confidant. Yeah. And he called me Comrade Marriott. I've never been a PNP yeah. member all my life. Um, Mot- um, Motley could the, kind of beat. He could beat people still. Yeah. You know. Yes. Um, and you know, he asked me all, all kind of nonsense when I was press secretary to Michael. For he instance. called me Comrade a couple of times, you know, yeah. trying to probably test, trying to test my method. Well, he may have known that your brother was. Um, was a member but him and my brother were very good friends, and but yeah. and him 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 was a a well versed Marxist at one time. Oh yes, him know Marxism. Oh, yes. Man, yeah, yeah, he knows Marxism yeah. and socialism when, when, when more I mean, than most um, of the so-called Marxists in Jamaica yeah. are genuine Marxists. Yeah, when we used to meet on the veranda, he was in that phase of yeah. his life. And not only, but he appreciated Marx very much right up to him. death. You know, his mm-hmm. Marxist um, assessment of the facts. He appreciated Marx's assessment of the facts and analysis very much. Yeah. Well, go ahead now. Uh, the social thing. So, But we're going to yeah. come back to the hostility that he, that he felt when you came back to Jamaica. Well, I remember once him phoning and asking Comrade Marriott, um, what is Dudley Thompson doing in Cuba? I asked, is, is Dudley Thompson in Cuba? Yeah. And he said, wait, um, Am I speaking to the right person? Is not Comrade Marriott? No, I'm not Comrade Marriott. Um, I'm Louis Marriott. But tell me something. You said that you didn't know that Dudley Thompson was in Cuba. No, I, I didn't know that Dudley Thompson was in Cuba. Um, aren't you Louis Marriott, the press secretary to the prime minister? Yes. Then how come you don't know that Dudley Thompson is in Cuba? Because Dudley Thompson is not the Prime Minister. <laughs> and, you know, this was the kind of nonsense that I got up to. Uh, he, I, he, I wrote him off. Yes. I wrote him. I, I didn't listen to him anymore because there was a stage at which he was trying to suggest that Michael Manley did not get a university degree in London. Yes. Well, you know, Michael, I think I heard that, yeah. Michael had a bachelor's in government 
Yeah. From um, LSE. From, from, he, he was a student at LSE, London, London School, School of, of Economics, Economics, and they did London University exams. Yeah. And um, the, the, the thing is, he kept on saying this, he kept on insinuating this on his program, so eventually I wrote a letter. Um, I, I to him or to the station? To, 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 um, to LSE. London School to of LSE. LSE, and they sent confirmation that Michael did the, the, um, the bachelor's, bachelor's, degree, bachelor's, degree. bachelor's degree in government. Um, it is an economics degree. It's basic economics what it is in government yeah, yeah. because they do economics and government. Yeah. And that he spent something I didn't even know up to then, that he spent one year doing postgraduate studies at the university. Yeah. Um, and I sent Moti a copy of the letter that I got from, yeah. from LSE and he still kept on saying he did, this rubbish. He didn't, he didn't make this public? No, he kept on saying the rubbish or insinuating, you know, even if he didn't come outright and say it. Um, so that took care of that. Anyway, what... what, what yes, but the, as a young person, no, you, you, you met, the first time you met is when you went and visited this home. And that's where you met him. Yes, yes. But and you, it, was he a, a court reporter at the time? Who, court, was he? Court. He was a Marty? court. His first, um, I think his entry into journalism or early after he I, went in, he was a court reporter. I'm not sure what his specialization was, if he did indeed have specialization. But in those days, most of us were general reporters. Yeah. You know, we weren't, weren't um, given So Where were you working at that? Um, that would have been... Oh, I was probably freelancing. I freelanced from very early. Yeah. Uh, let me see now. No. Um, I may have been on one of the 18 jobs that I had in the first two years after school. Oh. Um, and out of, out of that two years, I spent two, 10 months in one job. Yeah. So the other 17 job would have occupied 14 months. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Mark you, I found that a very useful thing when I went into journalism yeah. and I became a full-time journalist and playwright um, in 1957. This, this would have been about between 55 and 56 that I used to meet him on the veranda. And uh, it, as I said, it was a very useful background to have as a playwright because it gave me insights into a whole lot of things that I would not otherwise have um, had insights into. Let me just jump here somehow. It was about 1958 that I first became aware of Howard Cook. He was, he was still a principal of a, of, a, of a school in, I think, either Hanover or St. James. And I was in the country we had more man, whole family you now visiting Dr. Noel Holmes, one of my man, closest friend with, with my yeah. godfather. Mm -hmm. And Howard Cook um, came into the premises of Dr. Holmes. Was that making, was in, in Hanover? Hanover, yeah. Hanover. Lucy. Yeah. Was making some arrangement for the renting of a, of a house, I think. I had for, for some children to stay there. Because my old man had rented his place in Lucy. It used to be the boarding quarters for Rossi's high school. Mm -hmm. I was on the seaside, but you know. And um, but my impression, the few times that I came in contact with him over the years of Mr. Howard Cook, is what was that um, he would not be unduly influenced by the likings of other people or the dislikings of other people, especially politically. And that's why it was very interesting when you intimated to me that he was not in approval of the expulsion of the hard-working radical leftists in the PNP. Because them used to do most of the hard-working. The leftists the and the old-time Garveyites and the Citizens Association people. These were the hard-working people. These, and these were the founders of the PNP. Yeah. Norman Manley told the, the founding conference after he was elected president and he was g delivering his first presidential address that he could not claim to be the founder of this party. He said it. 
and it was in the uh, when when Norman Manley's centenary was being celebrated in 1993, the PNP's conference program, and I, I know what I'm talking about because I had an article in it about Norman Manley, the great sportsman, and that program had his his inaugural presidential address verbatim mm. and it said that he could not claim to be the founder of this party he said so yes disclaimer that's right and you know the the, the whole there were people working at it long before because in fact when ken hill founded his national reform association in 1937 hold well, on before let, we go to 9000 let's go for a break because i wanted the floor Welcome back to Straight Up. I hope my guest here, um, Louis Marat. I'm going to tell you this, Louis. There are some young men. I, I, I got an opportunity to observe some of them from a close range from when they were young teenagers. Some young men like Robert Hill yeah. and like Errol Townsend, yeah. who from them is in the mid-teens at least, maybe before that. I observed them and they were so awake and aware to things that were like beyond them years. And onto something early. Well, it's the same way you strike me, you know. Family, you know. Yeah, family. Family yes, has yes, a lot yes, to yes, do yes. with it. Because the Robert Hill you speak of is the nephew yes. of Ken Hill. Yes, yes. And um, Earl Townsend was the son of George and Mitzi Townsend. Yes. Now, George Townsend was a well-known, famous sportsman. Yes. And he was a friend of many newspaper editors yes. and you know, senior, senior reporters. Yes, yes. And Mitzi was a very active theater person. Yes. Um, she also did a, a bit of writing, yes. play writing, poetry, yeah. and um, she was she was a senior member of the Caribbean Thespians when I joined that group in 1954. Yes. Yeah. And that um, is what strikes me, you know, you had some young men who are uh, young women who from so early are almost preco precocious intellectually, not not no highbrow putting on nothing, you know, just genuinely interested even my brother, he was small, and um, from a very young age, he was very interested, you know, always reading public opinion, and, and, and our, our yard was full of, our yard, our yard and the Moody's yard, our first cousin, the, the parents of Tony Moody, God Moody, and Beth Moody, <laughs> Gwen and Leslie Moody, Say, tell me something about them, you know about them? I know, I knew the Moody's, Them yard full I, of I used to go to, yeah. the, to, to their parties in yes. Red Hills, yes, yes. Red, Kirk, Red Hills. Kirkland, yes. and when I, go um, to, when I come to Kingston, I was a little five, six year old, and when I go down them yard and I see the amount of magazine, Reader's Digest and book, I, have, I live there from morning till night because I can't tie it for read. They know as I say, you and, um, you know, from young age, them reading Spotlight magazine. Um, public opinion, these things. But you have some young people who, 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 who them turn on from early. Yeah. And you were so, one uh, such. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, and again, you see, it's family. Because my father was the 109th member of the PNP. But, but he, was, he was in the, the movement before Norman Manley, because, ironically. Because... Um, he, he, you know, was very much interested in public affairs and involved in it. Yeah. And uh, he, he was one of the people that got into Ken's National Reform Association, yeah. um, which was the forerunner of the PNP, and uh, the, the, the real catalyst for the progressive movement in Jamaica. Um, can I regard as a principal architect of that movement? Yeah. Because the what nationalist happened movement. The, the, the yes, nationalist yes, movement yes, subsequent to, not, to Marcus Garvey. Because Marcus Garvey dig it up. Absolutely. But correct. subsequent to that, Ken Hill. But you talk about the Marcus Garvey movement. What, 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 um, what we should remember is that the, that progressive movement really started outside Jamaica. It yes, started yes. in New York yes. in 1936 with the founding of the Jamaica Progressive League. Yes. And when you look at the membership of yeah. the Jamaica Progressive League or the leadership of it, what you find is that most of them were Garveyites. That's what I'm saying, because this is in the aftermath of Garvey's That's right. departure, deportation. 
and the Harlem Renaissance and all of these right. things which were spinning uh, in the 20s and 30s. Right. And what they were calling for was two things. They were calling for adult suffrage and self-government for Jamaica. And they were also calling to an end of the practice where senior government positions, like in the, in the civil service, yeah. um, were given to English, English men who yeah. were recruited, who were imported into Jamaica yeah. to take these jobs, yeah. which they argued qualified Jamaicans could fill. Yeah. And there were a number of instances where there were qualified Jamaicans where they used that as an example of, or, you know, as, as testimony for their argument that we could fill those posts. Yeah. And um, Ken Hill, they, they came to Jamaica in two, two representatives came to Jamaica in late 1936. And by then, Ken Hill was active in a number of civic bodies like the Kingston and St. Andrews Tax and Great Peers Association yeah. and um, the Literary and Debating Society and, you know, the Left Book Club and so on. He was a great elocutionist. He was yeah. a great orator. In fact, there were people who believed and I'm talking about people of good judgment, sound judgment, who believe that he was a better orator than Norman, than Norman Manley, Manley, yeah. believe it or not. Yeah. Um, and Ken was a great fan, fan of Norman Manley. Yeah, yeah. Ken was a journalist himself. He was, and his father? He, his father was a journalist. Yeah. Yes, Jerry, you know a lot of things. <laughs> I've heard. Yeah, yes. I've, I've heard of it. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, his father was an associate editor, I believe, of the Gleaner. Ken was a senior court reporter at the Gleaner when Norman Manley was in his heyday yeah. as a barrister at law. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. This is the same way that Mother Perkins came to learn the law so well by being a court reporter. The same thing with yeah. Ken Hill. Yes. And um, not only that, Ken got to know lawyers very well yeah. and, uh, you know, the most eminent lawyers he, he attached to. Yeah. Um, he was a great fan of Norman Manley, his first yeah. son born in 1936, Norman was a close friend of mine, yeah. Norman Washington Ignatius Hill. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, there was Anthony, who yeah. became an ambassador eventually. Yeah. But um, I became close friends with the Hills after, after school days. Yeah, you know, I played cricket against them, Sunlight Cup cricket. Yeah. Um, Georges. They Georgie. were at Georges. I was at JC. Yeah. And um, they... Or, or also footballers. All hills were footballers. All yes, hills, yes, yes. and uh, it seemed all hills also enjoyed it. Uh, 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 also um, attended St George's College, yes. and Ken was an outstanding student and sportsman at St George's College. Um, so he started this this National Reform Association and brought in all the civic, the progress, progressive civic groups yeah. into the. Yeah. into the company yeah. uh, um, and they they were really the nucleus of the the progressive movement yeah. and he was the architect so this is going on parallel to Drumblier well Drumblier yeah Drumblier was of course um, the home the home of, of the man, Norman of the man, man, and they attracted Norman, they attracted, they they attracted, they attracted a, a social circle of thought yes around them that's thought correct. and action that's correct um, artistic art, right and, and professional you know yeah. um, so Ken is, on, Ken is more underground nationalist yes but and he the, also the manlies were kind of more he, elite he but, also he but also elite but not exclusive yes Ken also um, was a drum player person you know, know. Who was one but it's still a parallel it's still two parallel things yeah and it's necessary uh, for these parallels uh, but, but, but Ken was more Ken was more grounded with the, the roots. That's what I Because think. Norman yeah. Manley was very wealthy. Uh, I mean, yeah. you know, his law practice earned him great wealth. Yeah, yeah. And Drumblier was a great house, and it was built on 30 acres. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, they even have a, had a cricket ground around the back where I played several times yeah. um, when, you know, when I was older. Yeah. And uh, the, the, my father, when... No, but to come back to the National Reform Association, which is very, very important. Um, 
Howard Cook was one of the people who were recruited. Um, he, he, well, he was recruited to the early membership of the PNP, but before that, he was a member of the National Reform Association. Yeah. And uh, so were a lot of young intellectuals and professionals. Uh, Ken Hill, I, I don't have any evidence of this, but I think it's very, very unlikely, bearing in mind the relationship that he had with Norman Manley yeah. and, um, and what he was about, you know, about yeah. the, the political movement, the development of a political, yeah. a political party. I don't think there's any way he would not have asked Norman Manley to lead the National Reform Association. Yeah. But what happened was, Norman Manley was certainly approached about the political party when it was shaping up. But he, Ken, um, approached Nethersoul, who was the first vice president of the People's National Party. Noel Nethersoul. Yes, who was a J.C. old boy too like Norman Manley. And a lawyer. Who was a Rhodes Scholar like Norman yeah. Manley, who was a lawyer. He was a solicitor. Well, Norman, yeah. Norman was Barrister. a barrister at law. Um, but, you know, it was, it was, I suppose, a natural thing for him to ask another soul after Manley had yeah. demurred about the leadership of the, NRA. of the party that was to come. Not yeah, the NRA. Right, yeah, yeah. Not the NRA. But what was being called the Jamaican Labour Party. Yeah, yeah. And the reason why it was being called the Jamaican Labour Party was because it was being modeled after the British, British Labour, Party. Labour Party, which was a Fabian Socialist Labour Party, yes, yes. not a Communist Party, no, no. More, more middle of the road. Yeah. And um, Norman, uh, fair, I, I suggest that Fra uh, Ken Hill must have first approached him, but then Fairclough took over the business of the recruitment of party, the, the party leadership cadre. And he, Fairclough that is, had been massively helped by Norman Manley financially yeah. in the founding of public opinion, which yeah. was the left-wing um, news organ that supported the movement, yeah. the progressive movement. Yeah. And he was, of course, a member of the NRA and brought all his particular the skills and talents to bear on the whole mobilization of a membership. And he went all over the country recruiting what became the leadership of the PNP. Norman Manley, for his part, I speculate, would have not accepted the leadership immediately because he was preoccupied with other things that he himself had founded even before yeah. that. Uh, Jamaica Be welfare. For, no, no, Jamaica welfare came nearly um, in, in 37, almost when the yeah. PMP was founded. Norman Manley started founding things in the early 30s. He founded, first of all, the Jamaica Amateur Athletic Association, yeah, the yeah, J3As, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. He founded the Jamaica Boxing Board of Control. He founded the, the Amateur Swimming Association of Jamaica. Yeah. And finally, in that cluster of sports organizations, he founded the Jamaica Olympic Association. Yeah. What about the boxing and the racing? Well, no, boxing the, and well, racing. I mentioned his, his, oh, oh. his founding the Jamaica Boxing oh, Association. Yes, yes, yes. He was racing, also, yes, he was also a steward of the Jockey Club of Jamaica. Yeah. Um, which made, and, and he was... He, he was one of those people who he um, who looked at races through his binoculars, binoculars yeah, yeah. yes, Real in the uh, rendezvous, yeah, yeah. and um, and you know they judged you know that there were infringements on the way and this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, he steward, was a judge, steward, and a steward. All right, look, we have to go he for went, a break. He was also always um, at athletic meets. He was always an official. Yeah, I have to go for a break. Sit. 11.33, and my guest here today, Louis Marriott, is as, is as sharp as a, as a wicket keeper. It was he who corrected me after I said 12.30 one hour ago. He is my wicket keeper. Yeah, straight up. You mustn't say sharp like a wicket keeper, you know, because you know what they say about wicket keepers. Right. 
uh, never buy a used car from a wicket keeper. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tell me, tell me. They can be very tricky. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. They, they can, they can um, stomp you without any ball. That's right. Yeah. They do all sorts of things. <laughs> there was anyway, one, yes, go ahead. There was one who played for Jamaica that they used to call Black Magic. You know what he used to do when the batsman went at the ball? He would hit his gloves together so yeah. there was a yeah, yeah, sound of a snick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, how is that? Yes. <laughs> Well, no, um, we have we have to jump about because no. we have to go jump around and ju just get some. Uh, this this is like a painting, uh, you know. We have it's an impressionistic painting. We can get some colors and some splashes of um, color and them kind of, and light. Tell me some now. I don't go ask about a few Jamaicans that interest me very much. I encode that some of them when I was a little boy. You remember Eustace White? No, he was I a Garveyite. I didn't know Eustace. Serious Garveyite and cabinet, name, but cabinet name. maker. Anyway, all right. Yuna Marson. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, lady. Well, her, her sister. Yeah. Um, I don't suppose she would have been still at JC when you were there. No, but she, but she lived beside me. I lived right. Yes. Who taught English. I was she our next, English next door when neighbor. When I went to JC. Mrs. Mrs. Marson Jones. That's right. Yes. yes. Well, Yuna used and, to live over there. And um, But she was in, in England when I... Yeah, you know what? She was still there. Yeah. But she had done a play at the ward in 1938, I think it was called Pokomania. Yes. Um, which starred a number of members of very prominent families in this country. Yeah. Um, the Crosskills were, were involved. Um, yeah. The the Covillies. Cross Covillies. Cross Curry. No, Crosskills. The Crosskills are around that. Hugh Crosskills set. Oh yeah. Um, and Simon, of course. The the um whom did I just mention? The Kovale. The Kovales. Eric Kovale played yeah. the the shepherd. Yeah. And the thing was called Pokemania. Yeah. So, you know. Well she was very um, African conscious, very and, and very, very race conscious. Mm -hmm. Willoughby's, never Willoughby's yeah, yeah. father was yeah. was um, was a leading boy. Yes. And and, and, and as some people know, when she was in England, um she was the private secretary of his imperial majesty Haile Selassie yes, while he was exiled in England yeah, yeah. and later in the 50s she sent um, he, he sent her with messages you know to the Rastafari in Jamaica reassuring them of certain things just as though he had sent um, Mrs. Miss Mamie Richardson who was a black um, operatic operatic um, singer like like Marian Anderson he had sent her as a miss as a missive of the um, Ethiopian World Federation. Well, I don't know if you like the story, but when I was editing public opinion, uh, we the, somebody had a bright idea to write to Selassie and ask him. Write to the emperor. To the, yes, ask him if he was really God. Mm -hmm. And so we sent this letter off to Selassie, to Selassie, and we got a response from him that he was not, and he would like the Rastafarians in Jamaica to know that he was not God, and that. Um, he worshipped at the Ethiopian Orthodox, Orthodox Church, Church, right? And who his spiritual leader was. And we carried the story. Selassie, I am not God. Front page. What by, year was that? By the headline. Um, this would have been 61, I think. Yeah. It, was bit, it would have been between 60 and 61. That's, about, think, that's around the time. I think it was 61. Yeah, that's around the time when um, the Claudius and everything went on and the mission yeah, and, the, and the Rastafari mission to Africa would have been accommodated yeah. by the government. Yeah. yeah. And the week after, we used to come out on Friday mornings, but the paper had Saturday's date on it. Yeah. And the following week, I'm listening to the news on one of our radio stations. And it says that there's a fire at City Printer. You now City Printer <laughs> was Don't the, owner, the owner the and printer of public opinion yes, on yes. Torrington, Torrington Road. Yes, yes. So I jumped into my car and rode, drove down there. And when I got down there, I saw a crowd of Rastafarians across the road <laughs> from City Printer. Observing the fire? Not observing the fire. See it? See it? On a blaspheme. Yes. <laughs> See it? Fire up our room. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> the paper, anyway. are the papers are burning. Huh? The paper, uh, uh, I asked the man, you got to call paperwork, that's paper say. Okay. There's a the paper yeah. burning. Yeah. Well, I want to jump to another, uh, another couple now, not unrelated to Rastafari, because the, the parents of a couple Rastafari, Bridget, as uh, to my knowledge, one of the earliest um, 
so-called middle class Rastafari brethren who grew up in a, in a prominent family, went to high school and so on. Herman Woody King, his parents, Iris King. Oh, yes, yes. And her husband. Yes. What was his first name again? Pilot. Fra um, yeah, Pilot King. Yeah, what, what was his Pilot King? Just slipped his name. But yeah, it put, um, uh, Pilot. Marine Pilot. Marine Pilot, yes. Yeah. Iris and King. Yeah, what Herman. Uh, Herman and... Um, yeah, 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 yes, man. Yeah, had um, Herman. I had um, Bentley. Bentley. Yes. And, and several, a couple of more. Uh -huh. Yeah. But and Iris was the first female male. Yes, King's yes, yes. Yes. But you would have known Woody King from your, uh, you would have known of him from your at school. You mean the, uh, the King? Herman, same Woody, King Woody, family. Yeah. Yes. In fact, I used to go, I used to go to their home because, you know, yeah. my father and the Iris were political um, cronies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My father was the 109th member of the PNP and yeah. I think he, st he probably started more groups than anybody else in Jamaica. Yeah. Because so you, what he used to do was... Um, he, he founded a group called Small Contractors Association. He was a building contractor, a small contractor. And it was Frank Gordon who told me. I didn't realize that the people that he would bring to, to, to meetings at the home, uh, because I knew he, did, he brought a lot of his friends to meetings. Yeah. But I didn't know of the Small Contractors Association because I was out of four or yeah. thereabouts at the time. But it was Frank who told me because Frank was writing a book on unsung heroes of Jamaica. Yes, I remember. My father was one of the yeah. unsung heroes he was writing about, so he knew. And um, and he himself would come to meetings there. And what what my father did was he, he was able to show them through the meetings how a group was um, yeah. the way all business yeah. was conducted. Yeah, yeah. And he would bring guest speakers and all that. And some of the big leaders of the PNP would come and address these meetings. So they then went back to their communities and yeah. started. So when you used to visit the King's Home, were they in Rollington Town? Where were they? No, they were in somewhere near Havendale, Havendale or... Uh, yeah, but yes, they, they the are, I think they had some Red property. Hills Road. Yes, because I think um, they had some property themselves, between themselves and Roderick Francis. They, uh, yeah. they had some, um, like a like a horse, a farm, a horse farm, like a they, Three Oaks farm or they, tables they, or something. They like. had cows yeah. and they had bees. They yeah. had a, be yeah, yeah. and things. So we used to get honey there. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And uh, and as you know, in Jamaica, maybe in other countries too, certain craft and trades are done in families. So the the, the, the marine pilot um fraternity is a is a yes, small yes. set of families that um, they pass on these skills to their children. Mm -hmm. Like the the um the Fra Roderick Francis yes. and the Fullers and the Kings and Prawl some of them is um, poor dry from like mm -hmm. Prowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about Roderick Francis? These people are some garbage, yeah, yeah, garbage, well, and yet successful yes, business. Yes, I, business I, I knew people. I knew Pilot too because of the politics. You know, yeah. uh, my father being this PNP person. Um, yeah. Roderick Francis, a very colorful um, yeah, individual. Race has won everything. Athletics, yeah. um, mentor of athletics. Yes. Merlin, not uh -huh. was one of the one of the people that he sponsored uh -huh. in our time when young yeah. difficult times. Yes. And he was you know, he was just interested in public affairs yeah. and generally and I remember um when when we when I was uh, in the literacy program, I was in charge of communications in the program for a couple of years. And um I was the architect of the literacy quiz yeah. contest. And after the the first final uh, down at State Theatre in Crossroads, I went up to JBC because JBC broadcast the, the finals. And um, when I went there, John Maxwell and Pilot Francis were waiting on me. Yeah. And they hugged me and told me how beautifully subversive it was. Yeah. You know, because we, for, uh, we, we, ha we asked literacy questions based on the level of the the participants yeah, yeah, in the, yeah. in the, in the literacy in the program yeah. yeah and then we um and then we asked general questions and what became very apparent to the audience we were talking about ordinary literary literate literate jamaicans yeah. what yes. became very apparent to them was that the fact that somebody was illiterate meaning that they couldn't read it all right didn't mean that they were stupid oh. or don't say yeah. because when it, when we came to the general questions this is where they really shone yeah. the people you know, who were who had low 
literacy skills. Uh. Um, and they, in many cases, outshone the people with the, liter with the, the higher levels of literacy. There are four levels. And you'd have a level one student outshining the level four student when it came to the general questions. And the general questions were really designed um, to arouse people's uh, arouse people's consciousness yeah. regarding issues like justice and and fairness, equality, this kind of thing. And most of our examples uh, were of people who uh, people could relate to and resonate yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, we were talking about football, we talk about Pele, we were yeah. talking about um, boxing, it was like Joe Louis yeah, and yeah. Sonny Liston and so on. And um, that's why they call it beautifully subversive, yeah, yeah, because yeah. it wasn't, you know, it wasn't promoting whiteness in uh, the way that a lot of these um, public programs would have done. Yeah, man. We have uh, got, we'll go to our final break. Pilot, our, our pilot. Yeah, man. For our final break here. Louis and uh, Maria talking about um, two people. Both of them had a spectacular shock, had spectacular shocks of your John Maxwell and Roderick Fandel. Can you imagine? We we'll go for our final break and we we'll come back to uh, two pieces of music and some commentary on the Jamaica of yesterday, the day before yesterday and last evening. Straight up. Yes, welcome back to Straight Up and Down into the last uh, 12 minutes of our program. But there's something I want to um, remember. Just remember those heady early days of um, nationalism and the idea of nationalism and autonomy, the prospect of autonomy. Now, just before independence, just in the same time when um, when that um, that same letter public opinion sent um, soliciting from uh, His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie whether he was willing to be that icon. Um, a young man became very became to the notice of the Jamaican public, especially to the political public of the Jamaica, by his frequent letter writing, much like um, Buster Man to be, came to the notice of the people in the 30s in Jamaica through frequent letter writing. This was a young uh, Edward Siaga returning from um, university abroad and getting involved in the university here, in you know, some graduate studies, Edward Siaga. And he started writing some letters analyzing the political situation analyzing why the GLP were not doing well and if they did not and and pointing out some things that if they did not match these things and counter these things they would not win any near future election. He, he pointed out that um, there are a lot of people in the civil service, in the teachers Jamaica Teachers Association, in the Jamaica Agricultural Society and various um various professional or semi-professional or you know career groups or what i don't know quite a, right now it's it, the words kind of not coming to me the right way but jamaica to teach association for example um jamaica union of jamaica teachers. union of, well i think yeah, yeah yeah but it, this was 1958 so the jta might have come into me or it was after anyway the teachers professionally by and large were seen to be most of them supporters of the pnp the jamaica agricultural society just as it is now mostly mainly pro PNP a lot of government people and this young Siaga was pointing out that a lot of government workers and other people like teachers were inappropriately campaigning for the, the, part, the PNP in elections and even outside of elections which was inappropriate for the jobs that they held and so on and if the JLP didn't pay attention to these things as well as other things like um, saying that the PNP especially especially in western Kingston and downtown were employing truckloads of bearded men who used to who used to go around around their political meetings and outside of the political meetings apparently as a bodyguard or an intimidatory group and that if the GLP doesn't match these truckloads of bearded men he was hint, bearded men he was hinting that um, these men were Rastafari brothers, but he called them bearded men and so on. 
And he was writing a lot of letters analyzing various things that if the GLP didn't meet the PNP, and he was saying that the PNP were using violence and intimidation in election campaigns as the ruling party. And if the GLP didn't match their strength on the street, on the ground, with men who could match these men, suggesting even with um, physical strength, that the GLP would never have a chance in government. Now, he came to, because of these letters, he came to the attention of Buster, who, started, who asked, you know, who is this man? And recommending Mr. Tavares and other people who knew Siaga that they must bring him and make Buster meet him. Well, gradually he was absorbed into the GLP, first officially by being nominated as a member of the so called upper house before the Senate yard, the Legislative Council. So at 29 years old, he was appointed to the Legislative Council and he started making a mark by his speeches and contributions, notably one about the division of Jamaica into the haves and the have-nots, those who have a lot of property and clout and those who have not, and pointing out certain dangers. Anyway, um, it was said that this have and have-not speech, this is a speech of somebody who has some socialist ideas. And I used to hear, when I, as a youth, 12, 13 years old, I used to hear this young man being described as a communist because I'm talking about haves and have-not and criticizing the gap between the haves and have not. And a lot of people assume that this man is more fit for the PNP more than for the GLP. And also, sounds and anecdotes used to go out that he wanted to be in the PNP was, but was rejected. And that he wanted to be in the PNP but was told that he would have to work himself up from the bottom as I ordinary remember like anybody else. And that he rejected that because he would like to come in as a kind of elite. See, I denied this thing over the years and so on. But one thing is sure that when the, GL when the GLP won in 1962 and he became a young and one of their out, um, kind of star ministers, he was given the ministry that Norman Manley himself had before, the Ministry of Development, um, Development and Welfare. And he not only took over that ministry, but he revised a lot of things that Norman Manley had put his stamp on and yet appropriated some of the things and put on a different spin or name on them. And also took over the administration of the newly built stadium which Norman Manley had Norman Manley had taken on the task of building. Okay. And then at the independence at the opening of the stadium, it is said that he um, ordered a policeman to remove Norman Manley from his honorary seat in the royal box at the stadium. You were saying something, Louis. Well, the thing is, um, you know, you have heard many things that I heard at the time. Some of them I can't prove. Yeah. And incidentally, that famous speech about the haves and have-nots yeah. was said to have been written by a Trinidadian um, economist who Not was lecturing at UW. No, Clyde Best. Because, because Clyde, Cl Best. Cl Cl Lloyd Best. Lloyd Best, Lloyd Best. Because Singham um, is really from Ceylon, Sri Lanka. But yeah. I think he was a kind of guru of the GLP under the cover. That's but anyway, Archie, Lloyd Best. Archie Singer. Yes, so you are saying that Lloyd Best actually drafted that. No, speech. well, I'm not saying it. Yes. I'm saying that what I have been told. Yes, yes. <laughs> is I wouldn't doubt it. Lloyd Best. But you know, one hears a lot of things and one yeah. doesn't. Anecdotally. I don't like repeating things that I hear as well. But rude. we have a minute to talk about but your family's contribution. Yeah. Louis Marriott. Is a, right. a, a, um, a kind of... Um, avant-garde sculpture was made of Bob Marley by Gonzalez. Gonzalez. It wasn't widely accepted right. because of the impressionistic um, treatment. Mm. And then Louis Mar I mean, Alvin well, Marriott was brought in to do a more realistic statue. Yeah. Well, the thing is that Alvin Marriott's work was more like portraiture, you know? Yes. It, um, a, a realistic. A face. Yes. He, if he did a sculpture of you, a likeness, it would be a good likeness. It wasn't just an impression. No. Um, or trying to evaluate what your thinking yeah, was yeah. or, you know, the essence of the man, Jerry Small. Yeah. The likeness of Jerry Small yeah, was, would bring that. was his particular ability, which was unmatched. And um, so the Bob Marley face, for instance, looked like Marley. It didn't look like a tree. What people are saying about the Gonzalez work is that it was a tree. It wasn't... It was, was tree, yes. was it, was, it was rooted in it the was ground. Using the roots, yes. um, in a, a little bit sim a too symbolic, symbolic for yeah. 
yeah. some people. And uh, uh, you have to come back here soon, Louis, because I tell you, we're out of time and we don't get to talk about your family enough. You have to come back here soon <laughs> because it's Independence Week. Yes. And therefore, I want you to come back here, Independence Day. Is that too much to ask on Independence no, Day? I, 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 Independence I, I, Day, I want you. Because Independence Day, you know, it's very special. Yes, I, I really have to go now, yeah. but I want to thank you, Louis. I want to thank my producer, Tanya Richards. I want to thank also my technical operator, Kirk Reed. Now we're going to look at treatment of music and making music our own, just like how the Scatolites made Chaikas getting their own. Mm -hmm. Alan Sherman, a comedian, made a music about a, a, a song about a youth who went away on a holiday camp. Didn't like it because of rain. And then when the rain stopped falling, him, love it and cancel him, him, him request of his parents to bring him home immediately. Let's hear this one. Name Hello Mother, Hello Father. Then we hear the scatterlight treatment of it. Hey Papa. Let's go. They're about to organize a searching party. <laughs>